Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support the show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to episode 170 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Today, as always, I'm joined by the man who's definitely earned himself a slow week, Lord Cognito. Normally, I ask, hey, man, how are you? We get into that, but Zach LeBeau is actually looking out Let's for get you. right into it. Yeah, we have a right in here, so I'm going to let him do the honors. Hello, men of Ducal definition, Dussel definition. You know what? That's a word I've never seen before. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna take my L on that. Yeah, you y'all can tell me how to pronounce that one. Uh, just wanted to check in and see how Cock is doing. He mentioned last week that he was doing a lot of running around. It was getting to be a bit much. And now on Constellation, he was saying he was coming down with a bit of a flu. Hope you're feeling okay and make sure to take care of yourself. Remember what you guys always say about being on this show, being in good standing and your well-being is equal to having great monetary riches. Thanks. And have a health as wealth kind of day. So to kick us off, Cog, Yo. in an unorthodox manner, how are you doing, <laughs> sir? Are we on the mend? I'm on the mend. I'm on the mend. I'm recovering. Um, combination. First of all, shout out to Zach. That's love. That person, yeah. he, he paid attention because it's like the sequence of shows. It was yeah. last the Friday Duke that I was on Stelly and I kind of mentioned it. But yeah, on Stelly, I was not, you know, doing well. But um, yeah, look, it, it's one of those things that, you know, two weeks of running around, you know, the, I told you the packs. Sure. East, you know, four or five days out there that we got, you know, traveling again and back Sacred 300. And then I had a ton of other responsibility for Lords of Gaming.net as well as the personal life. So it was just every day, nonstop, something massively important that I can't mm-hmm. avoid. And I said to myself, I'm not getting the greatest rest. So I took about two or three days to shut down because I felt like a cold and a flu coming on. Now, I will say this a lot of my bros are talking about from PAX. They came back with COVID, then came back a lot yeah. of people. So I also attribute the convention and the big group flu thing going on in conjunction with that, plus me not getting enough rest. So I took about three days and I just said, okay, that that's it. Once it was like my final day of nonstop madness, I did three days straight, rest, 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 nothing. Even gym was shut down. Mm-hmm. I was like, I got to get all my energy back. And even though my my rest was back, I still felt sluggish. I still felt slow. I still felt like low energy kind of thing. But I'm I'm better now. I'm much better. I'm I'm up to like ninety percent. I just got a little throat thing going on, but um, like a sore throat and um, the, the what you call it, the you know, like the phlegm. You know what I'm saying? Trip. So you take the mucinex. That's and do what all I that. got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the final thing of it. But that like super weak, low energy stuff and flu stuff. That part. I'm out of the I'm out of the woods on Good. that. So Good. shout out to Zach, man. How, how yeah. you feeling? Yeah, you got the uh, chest congestion stuff going on. What's going on? Yeah, today? yeah. It came down pretty late with me. Like it was gradual. When I when we left PAX and we got home, you know, immediately I started to feel a little something. And you always, if you've been to PAX and you've heard of the PAX plague, you know, I had the fear of God put in me because I'm like, this is about to be awful if I'm going to get sick because I I just it's never an easy time. And if there was one good thing that came out of COVID, is that the years following it at PAX, like masks which you know whatever on the mask stuff but it just kept people from like sneezing on one another spitting on shit like just none of that right and then hand sanitizers everywhere everything getting wiped down like i didn't get sick for multiple packs so i was like hey i could get down with this more cleanly this cleanliness packs wave and and then uh yeah this year it was just like back to normal and i was immediately i'm like oh i'm feeling a little sick and i was there one day <laughs> so yeah like it, it uh immediately back to old habits and then uh yeah it, it was otherwise a good time though but um i'm i'm feeling all right now I, yesterday it was a little bit of a close call uh cool. lately helped take care of me while i was like working and Ooh. stuff and uh she got me some some ramen which which is always Ooh. like the the ultimate feel good when you're when you're feeling under the weather like that and so yeah i came out of that feeling pretty good like the steam really helped clear things up and uh got some good night good night of rest uh, steve's in a lot today but i'm you know i'm just kind of Low and slow right now. Yeah, Nothing yeah. too crazy. Um, certainly not going as hard as you are. I'm 
mm-hmm. prepping a bunch of things on my end. Things are really busy here, but yeah. uh, you know, I'm not the one traveling a ton like you are. So yeah, man, I got more traveling to come. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun, fun, fun. But yeah, I'll oh, shout out to the ramen. Home. I had that for the first time uh, recently. When, when I, I never really? had ramen before. Yeah, I really? never had ramen. It was King. Shout out to King. He's got a spot not too far from where he's at. And um, yeah, man, it was it was a fish. I I get it now. I get it now. Dude. It's the it's like the cleanses the soul and the sinuses and the yeah. It, it was good, man. Dude, it, it is some of the best food you can have if you get it at the right place. And um, that's that's awesome to hear. I can't believe you've held out this long. <laughs> that's like yeah. impressive almost. <laughs> yeah, never had it. All right. Well, that's how we're doing, Zach. Thank you for writing and checking up on COG. As Much always, love. if you all want to write in, patreon.com slash Media. You can contact us through the threads we post every week for Duke. They go live on Mondays usually. And you can write in about games, news, or personal stuff like Justin Robinson did here. Got a big one here. We actually have two big write-ins in a row here, but let's focus on Justin Robinson for a sec. All right. Hey, Dukes, this is a long one, which I've been trying to bring myself to write for weeks. If you don't read on the show, please share with Cog and also all of Last Stand's crew. Maddie, thank you. On February 8th, I just got done running a mile at the gym with my brother. I was walking around the track and my friend Wes sent me a good job on my mile. We share Apple Watch workouts and he commented on my run. He's been really helping me and motivating me and my weight loss journey. He told me he was going to do a quick bike ride in and then he would hit me up later. We are coworkers, but friends more than anything. When I got home a couple hours later, my boss called me. Wes had been in a horrible bike accident. He had several heart attacks on the way to the hospital. Uh, We all at work were completely devastated. One of the longest weekends of my life waiting on news, waiting to hear something about our friend. I couldn't bring myself to do anything but lay in bed and listen to the Dukes and sacred symbols. I was praying for Wes nonstop, but I couldn't keep my mind from racing. That's where you guys helped. Simple comic relief, simple friends talking about things they are passionate about. On Sunday, I was walking into church and I got a phone call from my boss. She told me to expect the worst. I couldn't even sing a song at church. I was completely heartbroken. Speed up the story. Wes woke up. I got to see him. He's completely paralyzed from the neck down, but his mind was fully there. We used an alphabet board to communicate and he told us that he was going to be strong and battle back for his life. He kept looking at my Apple watch and I told him I would keep up the workouts and eating healthy. And I have been. Wes was told he would never be able to speak again because of his injuries, but he FaceTimed me the other week and spoke. He's speaking full sentences and working on the road to recovery. The Lord is truly good and gracious. Through all this, my most antiquated game came out, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I barely played it, just can't get right into the right mindset. I'm doing better, though, but one thing is remaining the same. I look forward to these episodes to help me through the week. I know you guys take a lot of grief online and have had hardships since joining Last Stand Media, but I just want you to know how much joy you have given me this last month i can't even play games but i sure love checking in and getting an escape from the world i know i'm not alone we really appreciate what you do thank you so much for week after week putting in all the work for us your friend justin robinson wow justin man that's that's that hit me hard um yeah yeah, man I, i feel for you i feel for you um first of all you know prayers to your friend to wes and you know um any comfort that we could provide during horrific circumstances and what you went through and the emotional roller coaster you've been through, you know, we, we're just glad to give any type of solace. Um, yeah, man, look, you know, life is short. That's one thing people don't realize, man, this gaming stuff is supposed to be fun. You know, life is short and, and we have to really, you know, appreciate each other. I think a lot of times we don't appreciate each other, you know, it just like that, you know, just yeah. like that. I'm so, happy that his life has not been taken right that's number one he's still with us he's fighting you know what i mean obviously this is a very devastating injury but i love how he communicated to you you know and and yeah. said what he said through the alphabet board as far as he's going to continue to fight but um yeah brother our thoughts and prayers are with you the family you know the whole situation that is a really traumatic experience and the fact that you listen to us to at least get you through you know that's that's the least we could do i just want to say thank you you know, as well for, um, you know, for actually thinking about us during your difficult time. Yeah. And again, giving any bit of comfort that we can, because that, that is a tough situation, man. But pulling for you and the fam. 100% perfectly said. Yeah, uh, life has a really strange way of sometimes sending us wake up calls too, right? You, you spoke on the, the fragility of life and it's it's just so true. It's like, I just feel like I'm seeing stuff like that every day. And uh, it's just let me drop a lot of the bullshit in my life where it's just, uh, whether it be people or, 
things that, that like emotional baggage it's just like you you just realize it could be gone in a snap or uh, you can just have things dramatically altered in a snap um and and it just kind of alerts you that like you're lucky to be able to just roll out of bed put your two feet on the floor and go at it for another day you know i'm sure west didn't start his day thinking this was going to be what happened to him and and so life can really sneak up on any of us and it's just uh it's important to make the most of every day. I know it's a very big cliche, but it's true. Like, it's just you never know what's going to be taken from you, whether it be someone else or uh, the ability to do something. Um, you know, I, I've learned that in a multitude of minor ways, I would say, in comparison to what Wes is going through. Um, you know, I think of like when my when my uh, carpal tunnel was at like a maximum and I couldn't mm -hmm. work. And it's just like I, I yearn for the days of just being able to simply work and Obviously, that's, I say that from like a, a point of privilege because it's not nearly as severe. But point being is you have these encounters where your normalcy disappears and you just would do anything to get it back. And so yes. I think for those of you who who feel like, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck in this cycle, the, the positively mundane, sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, the average every day is kind of a good thing because it means that nothing's been taken away from you in a long while. Mm. Um, but, you know, to Justin, you know, thank you, as Cog said perfectly, you know, for for thinking of us during such a a really tough time. Um, that's it's an honor that anything we do connects in that way and gives you a sense of comfort. You know, it's it's some some weeks why I just want to do the show. You know, you, you mm -hmm. kind of step into certain subjects, certain weeks, and you're like, you just know it's gonna be a shit show. And you just hope that the spirit of what we do here together, like Cog and I are always laughing. I think you could always count on us to have a good time. Um, and you just hope that carries out beyond the headlines and the 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 contentious nature of gamers and just that it connects with people in a way it's why at least i do what i do i want to have impact on people's lives and, and so it's it's awesome to hear that you found some kind of comfort in our show and hopefully you can get out there and enjoy final fantasy 7 rebirth you know continue your workouts continue eating healthy and uh trust that you know wes is going to be all right and he's he's going to recover so mm -hmm. thank you justin for for yeah. writing in and, and for, for thinking real. of us and, and we hope you're doing all right no doubt Got Dragon Paul 22 writing in next here, and then we'll get into the news. Hey there, Dukes. I remember you guys saying you wanted me to write back about my PAX experience with my friends and I. Sorry, this is later than expected. I actually caught COVID last week from PAX Cog. You were just speaking to that and Good. fell a week behind on the podcast. So I got a lot to catch up to. Thankfully, at my new job, I got working full time in a field I love. I'm allowed to listen and work at the same time. So I'll be caught up soon. That's awesome to hear. Congrats on that. Anyway, the experience was amazing. I wanted to thank you guys for the tips and places to eat. The highlights was checking out Legal Seafood and Ernesto's <laughs> Pizza like you suggested. Also, you guys were spot up on the food trucks. I could not stop buying those empanadas available when they had the fresh lemonade too. As for games, two of my favorite highlights was Astro Duel 2 and New Blood New Game that they were demoing from Fallen Aces. Uh, I it was a ton of fun speaking with the devs and they were even throwing in decals on buying their games and other merch, which was very nice. I scored especially well at a lot of retro game booths. I want to give a special shout out to Dial Up Games for having the most cleanest setup and best shopping experience. I agree. Their, their stuff was way cleaner than anyone else on the show floor. Oh, yeah. yeah, anytime I come home from PAX, we take that cloth and we, oh, we're, we're wiping the games wiping down. down and yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Uh, especially the Xbox 360 section, which had the stickers on the plastic sleeves indicating playable on Series X. Saved a ton of time checking the backwards compatibility list on Xbox. Also, the owner of the store was awesome, giving me deals for a lot of games. I kept buying from them all week, which is also true. That, that dude is awesome. There is so much I could talk about, but this post will go on way longer than I want to. So I just want to thank you guys for the tips and suggestions. I hope I could run into you two next year, maybe, and say hello. Also, Maddie, I did not realize we both stayed at the Dagny, and yet somehow I continued to elude you. <laughs> I have to ask, what did you think of the hotel? Anyway, Dukes, have a great week. Yeah, Paul, great to hear that you had an awesome time there, mm -hmm. um, especially on what would be considered for many like a low year. So you should definitely yeah. come back around. But sure. Dagny was awesome. Uh, that was a, a last minute call. You know, as I told my Airbnb story, it was a last <laughs> minute call. But yeah, that was a, a very clean, peaceful hotel. The the rooms were big. Uh, beds were comfortable. Pillows were nice. I mean, it, shower was great. Uh, really interesting art on the walls. Like I said, very old school gentleman vibe to it uh, very cool very cool recommended as a place to stay in boston for sure um, any thoughts on what paul wrote in about no i was just i was hoping to hear run into you at the airbnb in the in the dungeon in the, yeah, yeah, the dungeon. <laughs> that's what people are calling it now i got some write-ins on uh 
on the, my Patreon Q&A from Mr. Maddie and, and a lot of people were mentioning the dungeon. I'm like, oh, we're talking about the Airbnb in Boston now. That's what we're calling it. Bro, that story was wow funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, yo, that was crazy. The yeah. Boston Airbnbs, man. I, it's funny you said because I, I remember that brought my stories up, but I was like, yeah, yeah they yeah. do be having some interest yeah. in Sometimes Airbnb. you got to enter survival mode. Yeah, man, fight or flight. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the news, shall we? Let's start with Final Fantasy XIV, which its launch on Xbox has proven problematic thanks to an automated moderation system from Xbox banning players who are trying to recruit. We have the write in here from Aqua Mirage who writes, Hello, Dukes. Now that the Xbox version of Final Fantasy XIV has left beta and officially released, I think it's time to point out Xbox's horrid censorship policies. Players are seeing official in game terms censored, locations, emote names, etc. And if the player enters those words in chat, some are even being banned by Microsoft, not Square Enix. As one such example, a player on Xbox was banned for typing the word free company, the official in-game turn for guild slash clan slash community, after which they appealed the decision, but the appeal was denied. <laughs> yeah. Dude. You know what we, me and Cog always say something behind the scenes. I and mean, we definitely said on the show, but it's always something. It's always something. It's always something, right? Like, <laughs> They finally get it. We think of that moment on stage. Like, dude, it, it's just all laid out there for you. Victory, right? No. An, automa- an automated moderation system has cropped <laughs> up and presented a set of problems now. So, uh, you know, not, I would say, the end of the world. The game works on Xbox. It's there on Xbox. That's good. But we have problems here. Communication is a big part of any MMO. Recruiting is a massive part of any MMO. So, Cog, your thoughts on... Uh, Xbox just find themselves stepping on a rake out here in uh, Eorzea, I think is the name of the world for Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, man. I mean, this is unfortunate because, um, you know, apparently, like you said, free com- free company is literally an in-game term, right? So whatever type of um, bot sweeps or whatever that's going on to prevent any type of what I'm assuming is solicitation of them thinking people, hey, hey, mm. you want free company? <laughs> is, is is probably what's going on. You know, as a person who de- deal with a lot of online meta, uh, moderation and protection of groups, what's probably happening is the filters are set extremely sensitive and they're not put into account for this game actually having these names and things of that nature. But still, no excuse, you know these things for i guess my major disappointment is the ban after it was after it was discovered why yeah there should have been a reversal someone should step out in front and say okay we're going to look into this problem we see an uptick in final fantasy right mm-hmm. this specific game let's and I, I was surprised no follow up statement just yet you know yeah. so i suggest this will be fixed but like we said this is unfortunate. This should be happening. And it's the game that people were highly anticipating and these systems, you know, were in place. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. But I'm sorry, you, you said like you was going to jump in on this one. Too. No, 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 you're good. I was totally mm-hmm. listening to you because you, you've had experience in this field. I guess if I had a question, it would be, mm-hmm. I, you know, I was under the understanding that with like privacy settings and, and things of that nature, that was like set on the Xbox itself by the user, like, you know, parental settings, for example, or uh, things that limit certain things that could be said or sent or receiving messages to and from certain players. And you can customize all that on your Xbox and keep it open or closed in, in many instances. Um, and so I'm surprised that provided this player had them all open, that there was still right. such a heavy level of moderation that they got slammed here through uh, Final Fantasy 14. Yeah, I mean, it is surprising, you, you know, because again, the sensitivity generally they use, there's some flexibility there. The old in defense, I know people go, oh, here's some corporate card game, but in defense, of Xbox, the only thing, other thing I can think of is if players are creating accounts that were, let's say, for example, they were former PC players and now become an Xbox and they had other, because I, I think the offense was like 60 days or so. It was really long. So it was like a very severe hit. So I just hope that these people also are not like making accounts and they had prior history yeah. but i'm going to assume that that is not the case and i'm going to assume that for the most part that they like again when you see the term free company immediately my online moderation kicks in and says okay they're thinking someone is trying to hey hey guys yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know say creep mode you know you know yeah, you know what it is sure. so i think that and they just have to filter that out so that that part where they know when it comes when it, in pertaining to this game was it final fantasy 14 
that that is not a derogatory term. That is not a solicitation of trying to get minors or any stuff. Cause that's, again, I was in that field. I dealt with that a lot. And these are the type of trigger words that they would try to flag, you know, from an automated system. So it definitely needs to be resolved. We'll see what happens and we'll track it as it develops. We're going to talk a bit about Embracer and Sabre all right here. Let's start off with Sabre Interactive, where CEO Matthew Karch has stated that the KOTOR remake is alive and well as they aim to exceed consumer expectations. And indeed, they have left Embracer Group. They have taken this project with them. So all of what was originally reported was confirmed. But most importantly, this is the first real status update of is there a pulse? And there is one. Now, granted, this is coming from the CEO of the company. You have to take the words at face value here. But I never gave up on you, KOTOR. I <sighs> doomed a little bit, but I never gave up on you. While everyone was saying that you were dead and gone, I was saying there's got to be a chance somewhere. You can't let the project die. No matter how low I got, I always said you can't let the project die. And here we are, alive and well, aiming to exceed consumer expectations. Cog, obviously, I've talked so much about this where... I want to hear from you on, you know, for someone who's not a diehard fanboy, right? Who doesn't have all the bias in the world. You hear something like this after everything that's occurred with KOTOR Remake. And I want you to pretend I'm not even here, right? I'm not even in the room right now. What's your honest assessment of how things are going? What do you think the status of this actually is? And do you think we see it any time within the next four years? I don't know if you ever watched uh, Transformers, the movie. There's uh -huh. a um, there's a classic scene where after the great battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons, and Megatron is badly beaten, and Starscream, his second in command, who always had shiesty intentions, <laughs> has his body, and he has to make a decision as to whether or not we're going to carry him home to their planet or remove the extra load. <laughs> At this moment, Megatron, you know, because you know he says Megatron has fallen. Starscream mm -hmm. says that, and this Megatron looks at him like. I still fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is to me. KOTOR remake is Megatron still holding on, saying <laughs> he still fuck shit. <laughs> Before Starscream Genesis about and says, what have that? <laughs> and then anyway, but look, I'm not going to get too crazy yet because there's so much going on with, with, with Saber and, and obviously, um, you know, the whole history with the, with the, with the acquisition of was it was Embracer and all that other stuff that yeah. was part of it. But um, look, the fact that the CEO is coming out and saying it, it's a good sign. It, it, clearly, they show value to it. But I am worried, though. I'm still it's still a part of me, Maddie. I don't like that PlayStation turn whatever they turned down. I don't like that Xbox is not rushing to get this done when we all know they have the history, they have the chops. So again, I think we talked about it before. I, I kind of feel like whatever they showcase may have been too ambitious because you can't really mess that up in my opinion, right? So maybe it was just too, the scope was too big and the cost is too much for people to go, eh, I don't know about that because I'm with you. I don't think there's any realm where KOTOR remake isn't a slam dunk. So something has to be going on with the development as far as I'm concerned. So we'll see. Hopefully either the scope has changed. They've refined some things a little bit to make it to make a publisher say, you know what? OK, I'm comfortable with that because I, I it screams like uncomfortability. You know what I mean? Yeah. PlayStation. That's when you kind of, you know, PlayStation. Come on. We got to give them this. They They know quality. They smell it. And I'm, it, it may not even be that it's not quality. Mm. I'm just worried about budget, cost, scope. You know, did they just dream too big? And then you you taught me about development. Sometimes you got to rein things in. You got to, sure. you know, there's certain aspects like maybe we can't completely redo this. Sure. So that's where I'm at, you know. We'll see. We'll see. Because uh, Matthew Karch, he's been in the news a lot. <laughs> he's been in a lot of stuff going on with him right now and uh, Embracer and all that stuff and then the divestment, you know. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. But I, I'm pulling for you, though. I know how bad you want this thing, man. Of course. Of course. No, that's why we wanted to get your assessment first. Because, you know, obviously I've, I've waxed poetic on like, you know, it's time, you know, it's, someone get a, a funder for this. But you do bring up the, the, reasonable point of like if playstation doesn't want anything to do this uh, do with this and who who does want something to do with this and part of me is like okay so i 
I'm going to talk about it in the what we're playing section, but part of me is a, like mildly, mildly relieved on one front that uh, PlayStation might not be backing this because what I've realized is is with some of their games, um, mm-hmm. whether it be audio or visual design, um, there is this push toward accessibility and guidance, uh, whether it be like in God of War, Kratos or Aloy and horizon just kind of pointing out where to go what to do before you even think of it which is fine big triple a budget games stellar blade something that's looking a little more accessible but still kind of niche in its approach which is like a lot of like yellow paint across objects where you can climb them very guided very handholdy uh which is fine because i I talked about in my video of like hey this is a good accessible kind of souls like game that if you're even looking to get into it like this is a good starting level for sure um and it has a lot of focus on action where I, I think if it was to be exactly what it wanted to be, it would be more of a souls like game. Um, then again, in fairness, PlayStation never si- shied away with that. They launched their console with demon souls remake. Still, I digress. I, I part of me wonders if this might let KOTOR remake be the best it can be in the sense of freedom and uh, not guiding the player because KOTOR never had like waypoints. You had a quest log and you had to kind of track down locations that way. And um, it could be done better for sure. But um, I do wonder if this can open the door for a, a less restrictive experience in that regard, even if it would be a better funder in PlayStation, no doubt about it. Um, you know, there, there's pros and cons to it. So I'm trying to look at it that way. And uh, yeah, it's hearing it's alive and well is great. But I, I think the reality is we need to see this thing now. And, and I think everyone's in the same boat. Like we need to not right this moment, see it. Cause obviously it's probably not very far along, but uh, this is kind of a wild card, meaning this could show up at any showcase at any point. Cause we don't know in that gap of time when it transferred from Aspire to Saber and it was under Embracer and, you know, Jason Schreier kept saying multiple times, like, yeah, people are still working on it. Like it's still a thing, but I don't know how much resources you dedicate to a thing in question now that it's a little bit more of a certain future. That's the biggest takeaway we can have from it. It's like, okay, like, like how far along have we actually got? Obviously things slowed down. No doubt about it. Like when Aspire lost the project, Jason Schreier had reported like, yeah, it's like stuck right now. Like nothing's happening. Uh, So obviously it lost some progress somewhere along the way, but like then you, so, and games are always like (laughs) relatively behind in some sort of schedule um, because it's just so many moving parts. But, uh, I, I look at it now and I'm thinking like, okay, now that we're here, how many, how much manpower is on this thing? Like, that's what I want to want to know. Like how much are you throwing at this right now? Or, uh, you know, and, and how much was being thrown at it? And I guess we'll find out when a trailer hits, if it hits sooner than we expect, it's like, wow, they were really cooking all along. Or if it hits way longer down the line, then yeah, it's going to be a totally different story. And we're going to realize that, you know, it really did get stuck. So uh, we'll see, but KOTOR remake alive and well, uh, we do have our next story, Cog, if you're ready to move on to yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do All it. All right. Take two now owns Gearbox in what is a very good fit and probably should have been that way in the first place. Uh, Embracer Group has divested Gearbox, now owned by Take Two, for $450 million. Now, I went back and looked at the old story from 2021. Embracer had originally paid $1.3 billion wow. for Gearbox. Uh, it's been confirmed Borderlands 4 is in development. Uh, uh, there are some studios that Embracer is keeping, but like the, the main talent that made Gearbox what it is, is going to take two. So take two gets Gearbox for probably a more realistic price, but in comparison, a song like one of those better deals uh, compared to, to what we saw with like Insomniac, like that kind of low level deal that I think is going to make take two a lot of money. And uh, this seems to be the fit, like even when they were owned by Embracer, like Take-Two is still handling a lot of the Borderlands work, Tiny Tina Wonderlands work. So um, this is a a really interesting spot to to see this company in now getting traded around like this. Uh, Now that Gearbox is finally rested here and and Embracer Group has confirmed that their restructuring is over. Um, And so they're not going to (laughs) be, they they confirmed they're not going to be buying studios for a while. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense after everything that happened that you wouldn't be doing that. So uh, Embracer Group is now standing pat and we have Gearbox over at Take Two, Borderlands 4 in development. Cog, your thoughts? Yeah, man, these interest rates are high and all these, the sharks are out looking for all the studios (laughs) that they have probably a a real, you know, surefire plan. But um, this makes sense. You know, I kind of could see this, you know, Take Two as as a natural fit. 
seeing what they get gearbox software to get montreal studio quebec and then ip standpoint borderlands tiny tina uh, wonderland homeworld risk of rain brothers in arm and duke nukem so makes perfect sense you know and i assume a Borderlands 4 is the next up. I think they're ready to go. I think Randy's going to, you know, Randy feels like he's been itching to to get going and, and, and get that series back on track because a lot of people didn't really, you know, care for 3 as much. as You know, I know you spoke about the humor and stuff like that. So, yeah, this, this to me is a good fit. And um, obviously there's still retained assets that uh, Embracer has, but, you know, I think Undertake 2, they, they should be fine. So that, that that's my initial assessment. What do you think? Yeah, I'm uh, kind of optimistic about this because um, I'm hoping that with this, it's it's kind of like what we talked about when, you know, Bethesda went to Xbox and it's like, oh yeah, they were always working together. Like this kind of makes sense, right? Uh, Borderlands, Take Two, Gearbox, like that's been there since the inception of the series. Um, it's interesting to know four is in development just because uh when three came out three plays really well but I, just the writing made such an impact on borderlands and i i feel like it's gotten dram- like it's not uh, it's not as good as what i remember like it compared to borderlands one and two and then looking at three and tiny tina wonderlands and pre-sequel like this series has fallen off a cliff with the writing quality um and that makes so much of it because it's like these heavy personalities uh i think tiny tina's wonderland made the most gameplay evolutions uh, you know, finally adding like an armor system, for example, I think they could have played more and more into the D and D style of game, but with Borderlands four, I guess what I'm wondering is how they're going to inch things forward again. You know, what, what made Borderlands special and one in particular too is okay. You have this looter shooter game and no one's really doing looter shooter. Now everyone's doing looter shooter, yeah, loot everything. We have looter you. slashers. We have yeah. Neo loot vomits. Like we have loot everywhere. So yeah, that's why the writing quality is so important, not just because my personal preference, but it's like, this could be a great shooter with great loot and a well-written story. And, and that could be the difference maker there. But when you drop that off and you're left with like YouTubers screeching in your ear while you're, you know, shooting up a bunch of enemies for side quests. um, You know, I I feel like it's lost a step. So they need to find something new in my opinion for borderlands four. I don't think it could just be, this is the big one. Like, here we go. Just more shooting and looting. Like you need either to have a, a ton of playable characters, massive skill trees. Like you need something that breaks this wide open again, because I don't think when you look at borderlands as a series, it has had another, I mean, it's, it's sold like it has, but I'm talking mm-hmm. about from the player uh, satisfaction level. Right. Uh, I don't think it's had that major breakthrough mechanic um, since the loot was introduced. Cause that was its mm-hmm. defining feature, which is fine. It should still be there but just ways to evolve that. Like they should be for, they should be on the forefront of like, what does a loot game do? At least in my opinion, I know people would probably yeah. throw Diablo in that mix, but just Borderlands to me was like the looter shooter always. Yeah, Facts. I mean, it's the OG, you know, obviously as a destiny fan, you got to pay homage, right? We got to pay homage to them as the looter shooter, also the distinct art style, and then mm-hmm. combine it with this wacky, absolutely hilarious humor with distinct characters that usually just generally made you hold your side laugh like it was that entertaining right so it just seems like like you said they've been usurped right they they, now the others have caught up in their genre that they kind of brought and then people are not really in tune with the writing and the humor and stuff like that so yeah they need to do something dramatic to get people back to play yo remember us we're the og we did this and I, i'm with you there they got to get back to maybe introducing something revolutionary yeah and i don't know if the borderlands movies you know <laughs> uh, do us any favors on our opinion on the franchise but uh we'll go in with an open mind i promise but yeah borderlands 4 in development, Take Two now owning them for four hundred and fifty million dollars, and Embracer Group is done with the restructuring for now. Our next story, Dragon's Dogma Two, we'll be talking about it a lot later, has sold two point five million copies in eleven days of Capcom with another hit on their hands, uh, showing that even with a kind of rocky performance-wise launch in Dragon's Dogma. Uh, that it can overcome that sell really well. Also showing that this franchise can make a lot of money. I think they've pushed past 10 million total lifetime sales for the whole franchise. Um, So it's great to see Dragon's Dogma alive and well, doing great things, and that the sequel is being 
well received on the financial side because hopefully that means more content on the way cog Mm -hmm. what do we feel about the success here capcom looking kind of invincible 2.5 million sales on what is i mean now you can't really say it anymore but what was a niche fantasy rpg series hardcore elements very difficult uh what do you make of its success arise arisen <laughs> we are here <laughs> look man that's it's it's impressive it's impressive um you know i, I well I, we'll have a lot to say <laughs> later on about it but um no I mean, look man you know i see a lot of people taking towards this game i see a lot of uh clips and the social interactions the, the buzz around it and um it, it, when i remember seeing it as a person who was completely new to the franchise and i was just like yeah man i think your game got that look. It got mm-hmm. that look that, you know, people want to, it, it could be a potential goatee or, you know what I'm saying? Like it had that feel to it. And I think that um the the unique experiences that people are having are really helping to spread it a bit similar, not as dominant as Elden Ring, but similar to Elden Ring, that kind of feel. I, I look and I see the clips and it's, it's that kind of energy. So salute to Capcom. They are rolling, man. Sure. They are rolling. They, are, they have they dip themselves in the fat of the youth. They like old school Capcom <laughs> yeah, yeah. right now. Anything they touch it is 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 you know is really going on fire. And and we could we could make some criticisms for this game, but we can't deny like two point five in eleven days. Man, yeah. it's good stuff. It's good stuff yeah. for a series like that. And uh, hopefully, it continues to sell well. I've been I've been having so much fun with it. We'll talk about that later. Next up, we have details on the next Yakuza game. IGN has the report here. They say in a new episode of Ryu Ga Gotoku Studio TV spotted by Gamatsu, Like a Dragon series director Masayoshi Yokoyama announced that it would be holding casting auditions for the next game. And though it does not have a title yet, Yokoyama did reveal that the next game would not be Yakuza Kiwami 3. Quote, it's interesting new work. It's strange for me to say that, but it's probably better to deny it properly since it's been written so much. But it's not Kiwami 3, end quote. Yokoyama explained as transcribed by Games Talk, quote, I'll just say that I do think I'll do Kiwami 3 at some point. I'm sure I'll do it someday, end quote. So the Yakuza remakes aren't done yet, which is awesome to hear because Kiwami 1 and 2 are awesome games and I think we'll get more people into the franchise, which is clearly the goal here with things like Game Pass deals and stuff. But it looks like uh, they're doing casting for the next entry in the Like a Dragon series cog are you gonna be uh are you gonna be auditioning sir <laughs> <laughs> waiting for my call waiting for my call man the, the new generation of gangsters out here not this time. <laughs> but um yeah this this is you know this is always encouraging to see they, 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 they've got stuff cooking you know i'm dying to know where they go next you know mm. after after beating you know infinite wealth there's a lot of possibilities here and i want to know what route they take because there, there is a little I would say this. There's a little uncertainty mm. on my on my side. I'm very curious to see where they go. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Kwame Three is is is, is something that people want, but we yeah. got to see how they handle. They 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 tend to set things up. Is what I, you know, usually see from them lately. Like they want to build into something and some bigger overarching narrative. So I'm very curious to see where they go with the next one. Yeah. I, I haven't played, so I have I have less to, to say on this, but it's definitely good to see that they're already getting ready to, to do the next one, confirming that it's it's not going to be a remake of of the third Yakuza game, which I imagine would be a big undertaking. I remember that being a, a pretty either I'm think I might be mixing up before, but uh, it's still I remember that was a big deal when it came to the West. So I'm sure they'll do that as almost paying homage to oh, uh, yeah. the series' Western culture mm-hmm. uh, uh, significance. Uh, but nonetheless, Yakuza in development, it seems like so. We'll see what happens next. All right. Next up here on the list, certain affinity has been hit with layoffs for the first time in 17 plus years, actually in its entire company history, affecting around 10% or 25 us based members as the primarily co-developer company is said to be struggling to find work. And I know there's a lot of layoffs hitting the industry. Uh, This is the co-developer for halo infinite. And I thought it was, to me, more of the news was like, holy crap, they haven't laid anyone off in over 17 years. That's pretty impressive for a company of its size. So uh, any thoughts on Certain Affinity, unfortunately, getting hit by layoffs? Yeah, man. One of the top support studios in the game, right? Halo, Call of Duty, Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Um, So many they've helped out on. So, yeah, again, 
the the statement is what is it uh industry wide slowdown in the funding of new lead and co development projects and a reluctance of third party investors is what they're saying so keep an eye out man this is you know seems to be a similar tune right and no one is immune and like you said the great point before which I was going to say is that they were one of the few that was kind of immune <laughs> for a while like they didn't seem to, support studios seem to be really doing well you know out here yeah. especially to help out on additional projects and stuff like that so you know shout out to those who were affected and uh, hopefully that they can get back on their feet because yeah this is affecting everybody yeah it's crazy that they're struggling to find work right they're co-developing halo apparently working on their own game from our knowledge right that was something to do with xbox like a what was apparently a monster Hunter style game and then I imagine other projects. So uh, they they must have a lot of staff to spare to to, mm-hmm. to be at short on work, which is pretty yeah. crazy to think about. Support, support studios are needed in this industry. Yeah, hundred percent. Next up on the list this is an interesting one I found on IGN. They write Microsoft is reportedly making an Xbox AI chatbot that it plans to use to automate support tasks such as game refunds, deals with broken consoles, and subscription issues, as well as answering questions about error codes. The Verge reports that this chatbot, which is described as an embodied AI character that animates, is currently in testing. According to the site, the Xbox support virtual agent is part of a bigger plan to apply AI to Xbox. The prototype makes it easier and quicker for players to get help with support topics using natural language, taking information from existing Xbox support pages, confirmed Haiyan Zhang, general manager of gaming AI at Xbox, in a statement to The Verge. So, uh, are you ready for some frustration, Cog? <laughs> when, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I hate this because what happens is like, I need to speak to a human who I can directly explain my issue to and get to the root of this problem. And it's like, press one for options on consoles. Press two for options with error codes. I'm like, dude, bro, just zero, 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 zero until I hear the phone ringing. And it's like, yes, now I got a support agent. So Cog, what do you make of Xbox's AI chatbot that's going to be handling the frustrated gamers. <laughs> Skynet is here, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get ready. Xbox Skynet. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, I know for, for Maddie, he hates this stuff. I, I know. I know he can't stand this stuff. But bro, truth be told, you know, I, with my, uh, my Galaxy uh, S24, I did literally the whole order with a text bot <laughs> and it was, surprisingly accurate like i could not believe i got my whole upgrade plan done i went from a 22 to a 24 it gave me some options and then it was like and then i think towards the very end then it actually pushed me over to someone human right Mm -hmm. but um this has been going on for a while a lot of these companies are doing this this how i look at this is it's kind of funny because the name of it makes me think of remember clippy from office Oh my god, yeah. I don't know why I keep visualizing like yeah, an Xbox exactly. version of the clip thing in the corner. Like, hey guys, Dude, this gonna... dude's gonna be popping up on your dashboard soon. <laughs> it's gonna be really bad when that man showed up. Bro, this has been going on for a while, especially in IT support. You know, the the standard questions and 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 getting troubleshooting and things of that nature. I've also um done some what is it like? Oh, what's that? Alternate reality, like AR versions of of support as well. Yeah. They've been flirting with this stuff. But here's the thing: on the real side, like I know a lot of people. You know, the AI thing is very scary. A lot of people do not like a lot of this stuff. But it is here. I I went to um a CES preview of it with HP and their whole line of laptops, NPUs, AI infused. You know, that's going to offload a lot of responsibilities off the CPU and off the GPU that's going to do all these tasks. So what I'm trying to say is take note of this, because not only they, it, Microsoft is pushing heavy on the support side from a technical standpoint, troubleshooting. Hey, my controller is broken. All right. Tell me what model you have. Boom, boom. We'll send the replace. All that's going to be automated. That's a fact. The second thing is this is big for them because, like I said, with the laptops and the computers, The next generation of Xbox is going to most likely have an MPU chip in it. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be AI task driven. And it's going to help with a lot of offloading, right? Stuff that would be normally CPU and GPU intensive is going to go to this extra little chip. Sony's going to do the same thing. All of them are in it right now. So it's like we're, we're way past it. It's just that now on the gamer side, we're starting to see it implement here with like troubleshooting and, and tech support and, you know, controller support or whatever like that. But 
This is going to happen. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things that we, we, we get, we better be ready to embrace our evil rulers. <laughs> <laughs> you better be nice. You know what I'm saying? The sky there before something go wrong. But now all jokes aside, yeah, I, I always look at it as the tech in me as a net positive to help offload things. But yes, regulation. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We have to monitor and to make sure the efficiency and the human element of things are not lost in translation and incorrect things are happening. So yeah. I'm always trying to be balanced in that respect. Yeah, I just I have I have such annoying experiences with like uh, I was calling the DMV, just going through the touchstone, just all these bots just trying to get to like, no, that's not my problem. No, that's not my problem. No, nope, that's not it either. Like, no, I, I have a very specific problem here like that. I need someone to explain to me the solution to uh and it feels like no options are available or like banks like i had the same problem there so uh, obviously this is not the first site or uh platform to use this it's just like man so frustrating but i get it streamlines the process let the ai handle it and then pass off for the conclusion of the uh, of the of the task or of the problem in your defense the frustrating one is when you can't get to the opera. You try zero, you say operate <laughs> and you can't like, I know little tricks now to get it to happen, but that's the frustrating part. It's like, no, yeah. no, none of those, please person, please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what's but, funny is some of them hide it until you just yes. start slamming buttons. And then yes. they're like, yeah, we don't know what the hell you want. All right. We're going to bring someone in. It's like, perfect. yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. 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 Yeah. You know, the tricks, you know, the tricks. we got, you got to fool the terminators every now and then. <laughs> 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 All right, last bit of news. We'll talk about what we're playing. CD Projekt Red had spoken during an investor chat, and they said, quote, we don't see a place for microtransactions in the case of single-player games, but we do not rule out that we will use this solution in the future in the case of multiplayer projects, end quote. So uh, good to hear, although I remember like they talked about leaving greed to others, and then we saw... What happened with the rushed launch of Cyberpunk, even if I loved the game from day one, they definitely walked back on their word there. But what do you make of them saying that they're not going to be doing microtransactions in their single player games? Certainly that's, I hate to say it, but one of the defining qualities of a CD Projekt Red game is, is you know that they have the option to with games like The Witcher 3 or Cyberpunk, leave that stuff to the side, just do premium content. And with Phantom Liberty success, driving them into a very profitable quarter, I imagine they're going to want to continue to do that because uh, they, they would sell a lot more copies of not only the base game, but the, the expansion. So maybe they make more money that way. But uh, what do you make cog of the microtransaction uh, pushback from CD project red? I mean, it's honorable in this climate. It's very rare. I, I'm impressed that they are sticking with that because uh, Capcom would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, Street you know. Fighter. Yeah, Resident Evil. All of them. All of them. Why not every single one? Of them? Ubisoft would disagree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, like, they looking at you like, bro, you need to get on the corporate program. What you doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it's honorable, man. And shout out to CD Projekt Red. They still kind of, even though they're big as they are, they still kind of have that smaller feel. Like, they, uh, I don't know. It, it's every time I dealt with them, I get a sense of, um, again, no studio is perfect. Everyone has their issues. And we know that game was, you know, had its issues. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they did it have its issues at launch. But to see them rally, I've always got a more communal feel from them. They they act like more like they're a double A <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. to me. But um, yeah, man, you know, it, it's, it's admirable. They could literally milk so much if they wanted to on their single player games. But they choose yeah. not to. So salute. Salute to them. All right. That's it for the news. Let's go ahead and talk about what games we are playing. Cog, you have a big list, including some anime here. Uh, you are up first, sir. Let's let's hear it. Man, I was doing so well in my co- dude bro mode, playing my little dude bro games. And I'm like, man, this one game. I'm like, Maddie, man, this is his game. <laughs> I really cannot afford to play this game right now i got final fantasy looking at me i got a whole a baldus gate is like bro you was what? like half what's going on but the bug caught me i'm like i gotta be able to see what maddie's talking about with this dragon's dogma <laughs> i gotta see what the hype is about and i'm gonna tell you what i was still i was gonna wait a week to pick it up honestly what got me over was the latest ilp 
that I just had. Shout out to my man Jay Fonzarelli. Shout out to my man Kay Asante. We had them on, and these are guys. One, watch what Jay Fonzarelli already beat the game. Wow. And um, Kay Asante was pretty far in. So I said, okay, break it down to me. Explain to me. You know, and again, I, I know what you said, but I want to get some additional yeah, 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 of course. feel. You know what of I'm course. saying? So the stories they were telling me, I'm like, man, that sounds amazing. And your <laughs> boy did that, and this went down, and and I'm like, wow. They, they were just like, because you know. You know, some issues here and there, but the game at its core, right, is is amazing. So let's get right to it. So let's just get it right out the way. My experiences with this game. Sure. <laughs> first. This is your first time ever playing a Dragon's Dogma game, right? Ever. All right, cool. All right, this will be interesting. <laughs> All right. This thing, it, I'm on console, on Series X, is a framey little issue here. Mm. Like the, the cut schemes, a little, little jumpy here and there. Um, I put it on, now mind you, I didn't put it on a 30. I put it on the variable because I was like, all right, well, my, my OLED has VRR and hopefully. So in the beginning, it started off a little rough and I'm like, oof, you know, I don't know. I'm going to see how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say that. Second, your man is a mute. Like, it, there's oh, no, yeah. there's no conversation coming Just from your like man. like old times, baby. Yep. So I'm like, all right. No yap DMC. We love it. We love it. Sorry, so, I'm speaking for you. Sorry, go. So go. for me, I'm like, because the reason why it's jarring is because the game, you'll start talking to MP, like NPCs and they'll stop. So, like, oh, this is part of my part to say something. No, it's th- th- just to continue for them they to just keep read talking. your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> why are you pausing for? Like, I'm never going to say anything to you. So it's just, I just thought it was a little jarring. Yeah. Now, I graphically, agree. I don't want, it's such a weird game because there's some aspects I'm like, man. This looks good. And the other aspects are like, oh, you got a little PS3 energy yeah. in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like, like some, some joints do not look good. I'm like, all right, cool. And then obviously I, the 30 frames kind of hit me. I'm like, all right. So at first it was looking spooky for you, Maddie. I was sure, like, sure. Don't know. Don't know just yet. Sure. Get out the thing, start the quest. And then the game opens up. And I will say, as you keep playing this game, the sense of adventure, the sense of, first of all, the combat is really, minus the camera. Camera's a little old place sometimes. Can you lock on? Question. Can you lock on in this no. game? No. I figured. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Very I just had to get used to like, like you got to position your character. Position yourself. Yeah. But I will say, what I ended up settling on is, first of all, one of the greatest ca- character creators I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. By not by far like there's nothing really messing with this even down to the way you select your character down to the presets and you get a little deeper and deeper and you can keep configuring i like that i end up going with a rogue which i never do in a game i'm always fighter mage yeah you know what i'm saying i never pick rogue. so what induced that was i loved the, the dual bladed stance he looked cool i mean my guy looked just like me then they had nicknamed shinobi i said oh it was meant to yeah, be that's a wrap yeah. it, it was meant to be i have to i have to do this now so i got my character going on and then um got my pawn popping um i, I call him he's like sir podrick he's he's he does my little <laughs> pawn stuff he's my little <laughs> carry this do that yeah. and i go front this porn system is a game changer. Like, it is so much fun. Like, they, if you, first of all, I, I didn't know. I thought that I could only have one guy. And I was, that's it. They was like, oh, no, no, no. Go to the Rift Stone and you can now pull out. And then I was like, oh, I'm looking at people's pawns for my friends list. And then mm-hmm. they tell you the levels. They tell you how much this one costs and that one costs. So I'm like, oh, this is, then they tell you the disposition. So I like the dudes that go gather stuff. And then I usually have one rough and tumble dude to go in the mix. And yeah. he just, yeah. <laughs> I, I usually pick a warrior kite class guy. He's to be aggressive. And I usually have my archers and my maids start picking them apart and doing stuff. So I got one guy who's calm. My Podrick, he's calm. He he tells you the strategic <laughs> stuff. He's like, over there, you know, and then he he takes the very critical shots. I got these these arrows that shoot like uh triple with flame. He's got serious power. He's a beast. So he just stays in the background, and does his thing. Yo, these mages is nice. Yeah. These mages. Apparently they, magic in this game is really good. I haven't messed oh, with it yet. Well, magic feels almost OP, Manny. Yeah. Like, I'm seeing mages do they I got to do I, I hide. He look he looked just like Zeus. Like, <laughs> got do, so I got Zeus with me, Podrick, and I've got the other thing, Aaron. He just angry all the time. He don't listen. He rushes into battle. Yeah. But then I usually help him out with my rogue and support. So anyway, let's get to it. But the thing I like about it is 
the sense of adventure, the way the world looks is from an exploration standpoint, very cool. Going in the caves at night or, you know, just pulling out your torch, seeing how the environment completely changes. The way the pawns, if they have knowledge of something, is the most amazing thing. You know, sometimes I'll be walking, I don't even really notice anything. They'll be like, yo, treasure chest up there or yeah. ladder up there. I think we could get over there. Or you get an advanced pawn. And he'd be like, they know the quest already. They've already done the quest. Yeah. And he's like, follow me. Come on, come on, come on. I'm like, yo. It just, it gives a sense of being alive in a quest game that I've never really experienced. And you do feel a sense of loneliness if you're not with your pawns, which yeah. is very interesting. So I'm like maybe about six, seven hours in it. But I will say this. I cannot stop playing. Yeah, dude cannot stop playing the quest structure is very interesting because you got your main quest line but what i do like what they do with the quest line is what i call decaying quests which is yo you ain't got enough time to do everything i learned the hard way last night (laughs) what's dope about it is that you can miss certain things completely you got to make certain decisions the camp the camp system is cool um they really discourage scum saving so you you better have one of them wake stones or whatever they call them. Cause yeah, you make a bad you out what I realized you out in the wilderness too long. You better go save at a camp. You better save at an inn. Yeah. I don't like the pain at the end though. Come on, bro. Yeah. The pain at the end. They be oh, yeah, yeah. That thing. But uh, I would say this so what else? The weapons were cool. Um right now I'm going through an, a bit of an encumbrance problem right now. I'm, I'm mm. starting to get a lot of stuff. I don't know how you guys are handling that. Do you pass it off to your pod? You pass yeah, I passed off, but he's starting to get Podrick's starting to get a Do lot you of deposit cool. anything in the end, like materials and stuff. I gotta start using because yeah. what it is, I'm mining a lot of ore, silver yeah, ore, gold, ore, and that's heavy yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I'm starting to learn the different shop owners and, and, and getting different things. Oh, did realize this. With the other, because it's really, you really got one pawn, that's your guy. And mm-hmm. the other two are just brought in. So I was making a stuff mistake of buying stuff for the other people. And they were like, oh, eh, if you do that, that's going to give a gift to Mr. Matty Plays' pawn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they, they let you know, like, yeah. be, don't really be doing that. But I like that in the, in, the, in the course of the world, the last thing I would say, the boss fights are really intense. Yeah. Really fun goblins, ghouls, scaled on the back. I'm using my double knife scaling up at the side of an enemy. Um, I got this ability where I turn into like a cloaked st- figure and I can like, I let the, the guys fight and I'll, I'll like, you know, what you call it? Like go, like divert around the other side, flank. Yeah. And then they don't see me and I'm doing stealth kills. I got sick powers as a, as a thief. I'm having a ball. I ain't going front. I love the core gameplay is pure for I would consider this last thing I would say. Baldur's Gate has them on the pure hardcore of hardcore RPG. But I must admit, and you know I'm team turn based, this combat is just really fun. And, and I, it, it's 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 like RPG light, but just enough depth in it to keep me going. And it, it is it for the most part telling a very consistent story i want to see where it goes with it but you got me man i i i like dogma dogma i'm sticking with it man i really do like it good that's awesome to hear yeah Mm -hmm. i've been playing it as well just quickly get into it and then dish it back to you that i um i mentioned like learning about the time quests and i i was playing one last night where i was looking for someone who who had gone missing from this town and i rested that night and then i found uh it, finally the cave that they were supposed to be in it was just like a scrap of cloth and they were like pierce he did not make it and i was like oh hey, yo and so I, I i had a curiosity just to verify like i googled the quest line i'm like let me see real quick and they're like yeah if you rest during this quest that's it like that person dies so wow. it's not really a choice and consequence in that sense but it's like uh, you know when you're out there in that world and you're there's no waypoint for that quest like you just search high and low and there's if you listen to the dialogue there are hints on like where they are um, and, and I, I managed to track him down, but I had rested because I had lost a lot of health and I had been, I'd been going on an adventure before that accepted that quest and then kept going. I was like, fuck man. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta rest. And yep. I was like, yeah, we'll just do that real quick. And then I realized that I, he died because of that. <laughs> so, oh, um, yeah, there's, there's quests on timers, maybe not Majora's mask level for those who need a comparison, but you'll see like in your quest log, like a little hourglass and that'll let you know 
um it'll be right next to name that'll let you know that like hey this is timed and you probably shouldn't rest during this one yeah the game's very unguided though like there were there were quests i was doing last night i banged out a ton last night uh and there were just some that uh, i was like i was in that rhythm so it just felt like everything was clicking but i was thinking to myself like if it wasn't just clicking right now like this would be tough to figure out like there was one part of the main story where i had to find a place full of books for a guy and the place full of books was attached to this other side quest that you had to complete. And then once you finish that, then you could send him there. But that side quest wasn't marked or like indicated. They were just like, yes, find me a place where there are books. And that was yeah. it. And they were like, they don't hold your hand at all in this game. They'll no. just give you a, a circle radius. Oh, you don't even get that for this so, one. Wow. <laughs> at least to my knowledge, I, I didn't get one at all. I was like, holy shit, dude. Like that was crazy. So yeah, they really, uh, have made a difficult game here, but that's what I love about it. Like last night before I hit all of those quests, I spent maybe three hours just wandering and just walking. And it was like by hour two, I was like, damn, I kind of haven't done anything. I put some quotes meaningful. Like I haven't done quest progression, but I feel like I've done a lot and I'm just seeing this world and every step is scary. Like I found my way into this, uh, this misty i think it's called the misty marches or something like that mm. anyway whole map is just a cloud mm. it's very much foggy in there different creatures lurking about much more claustrophobic i'm like damn this is a whole different vibe and this next quest i i want to get to i need a i need a i forgot what it was like a passport or policy i need something to to cross the border effectively into this new mm-hmm. set of lands um and i'm looking at where that quest is located versus where i am and i'm like oh my god it's like a whole other Bro. second map basically Commute. that's just waiting for me and yeah I, I got over like 20 hours in this game man i'm just loving every step of the way i'm i'm with you i did thief i started off with the thief oh, vocation thief yeah vocation. yeah there's a move you should know about when you, you like scaling use mm. it's an ability called gut and run Mm. And when you climb on them, each enemy has a weak spot mm. and it's usually around the head. And when you mm. hit that move, you stab into them and then you mm. rip it and flip out mm. and you do a ton of damage. Like there are some bosses once you level up, like my first troll fight, dude, it was Epic. a good old fashioned slobber knocker. Right. Mm-hmm. But then as I level up, I come back to this troll and I just scale him, gut and run, half his health gone. I was like, damn, man. Like you, the power curve in this game is real. So you should definitely mm. invest in that ability because it, it lets question. you take down some monsters quick. Qu- I found quick, myself. Quick question. In, oh, go quick ahead. Question that I interrupt you. But when you're doing this scaling, right? You're holding, I'm holding right trigger and I'm, then I like latch on to them. Then I'm, I'm like, I got to hold up and then you got to keep holding it. Like I, I'm going to hold the trigger now. Just once oh, you grab. Once you're on, you're on. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was messing up. I yeah. thought I had to keep holding you press R2 to stay on. I think that lets you release. Release. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just jump R2. Once you're on, you're on. Uh, bosses can flip you off, though. Certain bosses right. can, like, freak out and kick you off. So when once now when you write to you, that means you stay on. Then you're just pressing jump or you're just pressing up? Uh, you're just using, like, if you're walking around with the left analog stick. Like, Got it. Okay. That's what I want to make It'll take sure. some reorienting, though. I still struggle with it where, like, because these creatures are bending over, yeah. freaking out. And so while you're cl- holding up to crawl up his back, you might end up, like, rotating around to his stomach and crawling up that way just by nature of how they're moving and how you're moving. It's a lot of moving parts, so literally. So mm-hmm. um, that's how you would do it. Yeah, you would just okay. climb up that Continue. way. and um yeah i i found my way onto an ancient battlefield fucking crazy like i literally step out and there's like spears everywhere there's like leftover uh weapons of war i'm like what happened here and then dude there's in the distance i just see a dragon and a troll fighting I, are you I'm like okay i haven't fought a dragon yeah. yet this dude embarrassed me he just stomped my ass out and he goes try again arisen i'm like i'm not using a wake stone on you you stop my ass out so i just died and reloaded and that was it but oh, yeah, dragon's dogma 2 is phenomenal but you're, you're playing a lot more games it seems so please mm-hmm. go into the next one yeah no just i'm sorry to give you a shout on that and then um obviously the tekken ranked continues but um a lot's been going on with tekken so um yeah yeah it is now we we got to talk the real now I, at first when the shop was announced i said all right I didn't get too crazy. It's cosmetics, whatever. Yeah. Now we got a whole bunch of balance patches in reference, and then the Eddie Gordo DLC. Yeah. So let's just start with the patches. There is a little bit of uproar now in the Tekken community. They are hardcore. It's not happy. 
Yes. They made a lot of balance changes. Um, but what people are mad about is that they're not nerfing individual characters or people who will have outlier problems. They're making these broad and what's happening is now we have inconsistency because one character has a problem when they hit you into the ground, it doesn't work or whatever, whatever. They make this universal change. And now whether or not a person goes through the floor or not is inconsistent based on their own t- determination right now. Yeah. So the good news is the uproar is so big that Namco has just announced this like the next day they have a hot fix coming. Okay. So that is reassuring. So I think the issue is this. The hardcore, we have, a, we have a little bit of a civil war now. The game is popular. The casuals are in. You know, it's aggressive. Your turn, my turn. Got to know your openings. Da, 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 da. The hardcore are getting mad because they're like, yo, you're taking away our combo creativity. We used to be able to do this, this, this on top of these combos. But I got to push back on my hardcore brethren. Mm-hmm. I think you guys... I get it. You want to do all these combos that keep you up. That feels oppressive to a new player. Cause it's like, bro, I'm in the air. I'm in the air. I'm on the floor. Now I'm getting okie. When am I, when is it my turn? I'm just getting thrashed. Right? So I think Namco understands that, that the game does have a casual appeal and they're going to shorten something so that it goes back to neutral. You can't be, in the air and on the floor, ninety percent of the fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's where I push back. Like, oh, they're 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 homogenizing the game with the combos and stuff like that. But being combo like that does not feel fun. I'm just gonna be honest. So Tekken's that's where a I'm broke game anyway, right? So that's what I'm saying. Let's get back to the neutral. So I'm probably in the minority on this field. I think more of the hardcore feel the opposite. So that's that. All right, this Eddie Gordo. Oh boy, you got the fight pass. You've experienced him. Whoa. Oh, Xbox guys. All right. They got to fix this. Why isn't he available as soon as you already bought the season pass? Why do I have to go into my manage the game and then I have to click install and make sure he download? <laughs> he was, he literally had a lock sign. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to have to buy it. I thought I bought the season pass. Like, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Bro, I was tight. I was tight. Sure. So luckily I figured it out, but I'm noticing a lot of people online. I don't know. It seems to be an Xbox issue because most of the time, another place the stuff it'll be you know it'll be released. So anyway, so that's that. Back to Eddie Goro. Boy, he seemed old, OP. Woo wee! Right when I saw that trailer, he had all the movements like Zhao Yu, and I was like, it's over, bro. Like he's gonna be so good, bro. It's the speed of the mix-ups, the the priority, and it's early. Eddie Gordo is always a notoriously hard to deal with. Copper wear the fighter, yeah. the mix-ups, the lows, but he just seems to have an answer for everything. So right now, it's early. I fought like two. The guy was already, you know, Tekken godlike rank, or whatever. I'm like, damn, the game just came out. How you? Whatever. Yeah, he this 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 man's a problem. So yeah. get ready, you know, with him. But um, other than that, you know, they're finding their way. I will give. Oh, my bad. The biggest thing we didn't even talk about. This battle pass. Oh, we have a write in. We have Let's a right. Get to it, please. Mitchell in the median writes, Good day, Dukes. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Harada and Michael Murray at team. In regards to the free and premium tiers, please up your game on the Tekken Fight Pass. How are you going to be worse than launch Halo Infinite? If you want my money, maybe put something cool in there. Sorry, I'm not paying for fight banners and titles with weak sauce, bland, no season having customizables. Bye bye. Cock, take it away. Yeah, shout out to Mitchell, man. Look, again, I tried to be fair Tekken shop did not bother me i'm like yeah Tekken three suit Tekken four suit monetization fine i mean cosmetics fine this battle pass is trash i'm just gonna be all like it is so the stuff that they're offering in the premium level was like a profile picture that you could only see when you're in a Tekken fight lounge um that's weird jackets and, and stuff that were already in Tekken 7 as part of the base package is now on. So I'm like, mm. I look, it, it does feel worse than Halo. Because at least Halo Infinite had, you know, they broke things up by the shoulders and the flames and stuff like that. But some of this stuff is really useless stuff. It, it, it should be way more cosmetic driven and more, put it this way, I'd rather them use, you know how like it says, get ready and you see, the profile pain of, yeah, of yeah. 
I'd rather be like more cool illustrations of that that I'm going to see regularly. Not something in the Tekken Lounge and Avatar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it seems very half baked. It seems they also charging, if you want the premium plus version of the Battle Pass, yeah, you get 20 levels unlocked automatically. Look, man, I, I, I can't co sign this one. Yeah. Like, y'all got to come way better than that. I mean, for, for what y'all, you know, charging the free stuff. Especially the, the, we're talking about a game you have to buy into, right? right. So there's there's got to be a level of give back yeah. there, right? I saw maybe out of the 50 levels, I saw maybe like eight things. I'm like, okay, that's okay. That's cool. They had like a cyber suit and they had like this um hairstyle thing, whatever. But for the most part, yeah, this battle pack, they're getting the smoke for that. A lot of people don't like it. So. Yeah. Yeah, tech is going through the honeymoon for slowing down. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as what Batty would say, evil villain Bandai Namco is kicking <laughs> in a little bit. You know, um, I don't know if this is the marching orders that they gave Harada that you we got to get this money because that other game that they came out before that flop. Something happened yeah. because this thing seems rushed. And, uh, and to the defense of the people who didn't like Tech and Shop, the main argument was like, yo, why didn't y'all tell us y'all was doing this before launch? Yeah. Why it's kind now? of turning into a live service product with the passes and the shop. It's uh, strange to see. Right. So again, you don't have to participate in it. They have dailies, they have weeklies, but I just want to put people aware of I can't justify the value for that. So that's that. And then um obviously, bro, um Destiny is doing some things. I don't want to I don't want to get gassed, but now we're showing. Remember last week I told you signs of life. Yeah. Bro. This into the light showcase that they had for a free content update, it is pretty impressive. It is so impressive. It's better than probably any season they've ever done that's been paid. <laughs> so they've got four new PvP maps. They've got they're bringing back a lot of people. Like, oh, bro, they're just bringing back um recycled stuff or whatever. I get it. Not all of it is recycled. Not all of it is old stuff. But the thing that is really impressive is they're going for the nostalgia. They're going for the true feel of destiny. And I will say this, the hype meter is back in the community. I'm mm. seeing it. I'm seeing people say, Hey, no, this is a W y'all. This is a, and then next week they're about to show the, um, final shape gameplay. So to me, that's a, that's a little bit of sign of a confidence and yeah, they've been killing the streams. They've been killing everything. It's so much to talk about with destiny right now, but I will say this. They got a shot. Okay. Now I went from, eh, now it's like, if you nail this and then you nail this next one and it shows well, you got a shot. And I'm pulling for them, of course. I mean, I've got so much history with this game, but I will say this. They are pulling out all the stops and this is very, and for the new players, they got to think that you can, as soon as you're there, day one, boom, you're at the light level of whatever. You can, you can participate in all this stuff for free. Uh-oh. Bro, Uh-oh. extremely impressive. So they're knocking it out the box. It's a bullet list of anybody who wants to ask of all the things they added. It's literally like two pages long of content. Wow. It's impressive. So salute wow. to Destiny 2, salute to Into the Light. We'll see if Final Shape impresses. And then the last thing, this is a little surprise. Shout out to King David. Yeah. Um, He's been on me. Kong, you can't be Cognito. You can't be the Shinobi. You're talking all this ninja, and you ain't watching the hottest anime out. Right, what's she talking about? Some ninja, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Kami, Kamu, I don't even know. Ninja Kamui. Kamui, right? So I'm like, All right, I heard about it. Then a couple other LSM guys hit me up, like, Yo, Cog, I think you like this, man. This is what I'm like, Yeah, but y'all be liking them little new animes. I don't be liking them new anime. Yeah. So we'll see. But so I started, I finally started it. And I'm watching this thing. I'm like, Okay, vibe is dope. Vibe is cool. Liking how it starts. Totally threw me for a loop on what the whole thing was about at first. Mm. And I'm like, all right. So as it goes on, you know, um, what's my man name? Oh, man. Why am I forgetting the main character's name now? He has this dope name. It's so, so, so dope. But as it starts, you understand why the character behaves the way he does, acts the way he does. And they, they, they are some true ninja... I don't say completely grounded. There's still a lot of over the over the top stuff, but the fight choreography, the scenes are just stylistic, brutal. I'm from that old school '90s anime with vicious. I'm like, okay, writing stories decent. Writing can be a little quirky at times, 
But overall premise is dope. Ninja Kamui, you got me. I'm in. I've been watched the first eight episodes. This is this is something to check out. This yeah. is something to check out. I, I'm very, very impressed with it. The first modern anime that Cog is like, <laughs> all right, y'all was right. This I might be go one for King me. David moving forward. That's yeah, all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. KK, he's on it. So yeah, man, that that it, 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 it's dope. It's dope. I love where they go. Yeah. One of the coolest twists and you know, backstories and they try to keep ninja essence stuff going. And I, I like what they do. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I watched uh, the first two episodes of Ninja Kamui and mm-hmm. I think it's from the, I want to say the director of John wick and season mm-hmm. one of JJK, which makes mm-hmm. sense. JJK has some pretty intense fights too. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, the animation in Ninja Kamui is like Ooh. some next level shit. It's, oh. It's crazy. He gone. I love his name. He yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they got, it's like a, a decent story, but it's got some insane fights. Like that, I, I just recommend people check out the first episode. It's, Yo. it's, uh, I don't know if the whole season goes that way, but you know, at least the first episode has got some pretty nuts fight scenes. Like some of the best you'll ever see in animation. Absolutely. Shout yeah. out to Ninja Kamui. Well, Kai, you had a very busy week. I already talked yes. about Dragon's Dogma 2, so I got Ooh. two extras here for y'all. Uh, Stellar Blade. I tra- checked out the demo to this one. Um, I actually made a video on my Mr. Matty channel if anyone's interested in checking that out. But uh, yeah, this one I was really keen to get a look at just because, you know, I'm going to be honest. I know there's a lot of hype for this game, but for me, whenever I looked at it, I went, oh, I've seen this before, but with like other games doing it way better. Uh, the combat just looked off. Uh, the world looked very near, but like not getting what made Nier's world special. Uh, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know what? The hype's ramping up. The demo's here nice and early. Let's just try it out for ourselves. Right. So, uh, I fired up, uh, the opening is, is awesome. I mean, it's like an all out war. You're storming the beaches. Uh, these like robot synthetic chicks are fighting off these crazy looking creatures. Uh, the creature design is, is incredible. Uh, really fucked up looking very bloody game, which was surprising. Um, you have a weak attack and a, and a strong attack kind of move like squares, quick triangle is, is more heavy um, and, and leaves you open for more counterattacks, but you, you do a lot more damage. Uh, but there's deflecting like Sekiro, there's dodging. Uh, you can do a perfect dodge, perfect parry. So you, you know, whittle down a stagger gauge effectively. Uh, there's a meek counter for those who have played Sekiro. It's where you like dodge pretty much at the attack. And you in, in the case of Sekiro, you step on the blade and leave them wide open. Uh, whereas here in this game, uh, there's a forward meekery and a backwards meekery where you go forward and you blink behind them. Uh, if you time it with a particular attack, um, they do a good job telegraphing to the player what attacks are coming. So it's pretty easy to read. And then there's one where you can go backward and get some space. So a lot of defensive options. It's in between Nier and Sekiro in its gameplay approach. I think the world is awesome. Uh, post-apocalyptic, uh near soundtrack completely it's by keichi okabe who who did the uh the the composition for near so it, it for anyone who likes the near soundtrack you're gonna love stellar blaze soundtrack like i've already been listening to it on the side it's it's phenomenal stuff uh the world is really interesting you know you 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 start off in this abandoned city it's very much wrecked and you're it's raining like the atmosphere is strong but I just, you know, I got to be real, man. If I got one drawback for this game, and I know this is like, I think I'm in the minority overall, but I think some people have shared my opinion. This combat, just something feels off about it. Um, you know, it's a it's steep competition, as we talked about Liza P, which is why I really sung the praises of that one. It's steep competition. If you were going to enter the Soulsborne genre and try your hand at it, you cannot be non-committal. And I find Stellar Blades combat non-committal. By that I mean yeah. it has these moments that are like, here's 10 enemies coming your way. Take them all out at once. And they give you some abilities to handle that. But this game's combat feels more tuned for one-on-one. But there's moments they want to be like all out action and moments they want you to have that Sekiro intimate one-on-one duel. And it just feels like right now in this demo where there's a whole skill system and leveling up. So this can evolve, mm-hmm. this can change. But right now this right. demo showed me Come like on. you have not picked a lane. You have not picked, let's go for the elegant dance that is near and make this look really flashy. And you have not picked the, rep- the precise and responsive combat 
of Sekiro and the one-on-one nature of it. You want both. And this is one of those rare cases where you can't have your cake and eat it too if what I played is indicative of the final product. It's not bad. Before anyone jumps to a conclusion, it's not a bad game. It's not bad combat, but it feels off. The movement tech is very stiff. Like you're very much... When you lock on, you're you you go from a jog to a slow walk, and it's a weird uh, transition. Like it's, I I I want to love this game. I have a whole friend group who's co-signing the shit out of this game. I'm like, guys, I just I can't I can't too. sit here and act like I'm digging this thing completely. Like the combat doesn't feel right to me. It's not bad, but it feels like it could be so much better. Particularly the movement. Maybe I'm spoiled, right? I'm coming off of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which has some of the most mobile floaty best feeling combat i've played in a while so yeah that might be part of it but i feel i play enough games where i'm able to separate them individually and i just i don't know stellar blades combat Mm. it's not bad it it works for some people but for me i'm just not clicking with it right now and i don't think it's souls fatigue like after liza p i'm like no give me give me all the korean studio work (laughs) give me every korean studio and so shift up is a korean studio uh, I think the first thing they made was like a mobile game. Uh, so this is their breakout console game. And like, I'm still going to try to play it and, and see what it develops. But right now the demo showed me like, okay, you got a dope world, dope soundtrack. Uh, they do some cool things, Cog. Like, um, for example, uh, they have the camps, right? It, it kind of like a bonfire from souls. But again, this is where it's kind of in the middle. Like these aren't respawn points. They don't build the level around these. They're just pit stops. So it's really weird. Like you'll die and you'll just respawn like out in the doorway of which you came into, right? The, so it's not punishing. It's just kind of like a difficult game. Uh, but you sit at these camps and when you, when you go through there, they have a record player, which again, amazing music playing here too. Funny enough, Liza P also had a record player. So something's going on in South Korea. Something's going on in South Korea with the record, with the record player push, but um, they have a machine that you can buy items from. They have a skill level up machine. So you can just pick new skills, new attacks, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then you can sit and kind of rest. And when you rest, both times I did it, uh, Eve, the main character, reflected on her past. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's kind of like when you choose to slow down the game, it also delivers you some story. Gotcha. Otherwise, it's 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 got a pretty good pace to it. So I could see that working really well for the game. I kind of like how they handle that. It's very intelligent on how they design the narrative thus far. But yeah, I, I dig it. It's solid. Uh, I don't love it, though. And uh, gotcha. I guess it matched my personal expectations. But for many, it's, it's blown their expectations out of the water. So what I'll say is if you're listening and what I said sounds cool to you, give it a try. You might like it more than me. Uh, very close near comparisons when it comes to his world, though. It's like empty. You have a pod. It's Adam and Eve. It's like it's almost shameless. <laughs> it's almost shameless. I got you. Uh, last thing here. What don't you got? I got into my live service bag. Oh, man, because I am a psycho. <laughs> Suicide Squad season one. You Saw the Joker it. was here. Redownload the game. Oh, they getting you for that Joker, by the way. I don't know yeah. if you saw it in the final new. Uh, uh, the oh, 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 yeah. oh, have I oh, seen it by chance? Oh, yeah, boy, hey, you on fire. Oh, there, yeah, man. they're going to run a mile with this one then because now I've played it. Now I play, and that's the thing. I was wondering. I was like, "Why am I thinking about this so much?" Like, I hate this game. I'm like, "It's because I fucking see me photoshopped as the Joker from Suicide Squad every day." It's unbelievable. The Duke audience is hilarious, though. But yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, we have the Patreon Discord in the Duke chat. They're just always using this this picture <laughs> that kind of looked like me at one point when I had a different haircut, and they used the smug Maddie look with the Joker from Suicide Squad. I'm like, why the fuck does that look so accurate? Like that looks like something <laughs> you could put in game. So yeah, it's pretty funny. But um, now I know why I was thinking about it so much. And and so I saw people talking about it, like I always do with Suicide Squad. All right, let's check this thing out. Um, so I fired up. I bought the Joker. You know, it was ten bucks. So I was like, all right, let's just see. I don't really want to waste time with this. You, I looked it up. You have to rank up thirty five times, and it's it's Battle Pass to. Um, to unlock him for free. And I was like, you know what? I just, it, to me, it's about the playable characters. Like if this guy feels good, then this could literally change the whole game. Cause one of my complaints is how a lot of the characters felt. So, uh, he's got an umbrella that kind of lets him glide. He's a glidey character. Like he glides in the air. Then you can kind of ride the umbrella. Like his movements kind of fresh. Like he can fly pretty fast. Uh, when you're scaling up walls, if you press the jump button, right when you get to the top, He'll like explode up in the air and start floating with his with his uh, little umbrella. So Mary Poppins, Joe. Yeah, yeah. It's very. It was yeah, very Mary Poppins. Yeah, it was. It was very uh, good feeling though. I mean, I, I, compared to the other movement options, like I only like Deadshot 
Um, but yeah, he he feels pretty good to me. We're like, OK, this is step one. Like this guy gets around quick uh, when you're in combat. You're going to be floating a lot with the umbrella, just aiming and shooting. So you have good movement options on the ground in air. Uh, story is dog shit. Like, I don't know how else to put it, man. Like, here we are again. Uh, like 13 minutes of cutscenes. Like, season one really not delivering at all. Um, the Joker himself. See, the problem is, you guys, y'all should have never connected this to the Arkham verse. I know why you felt you had to, but like, mm-hmm. when you know Arkham Joker, and that's performance aside, Mark Hamill's yeah. a special talent. Facts. But when you know the being that is Arkham Joker, and then you see this Joker, I don't care if he's an Else Worlds concoction mm. or Other Worlds or whatever they're calling it, dude. It's just an abomination, man. It's not mm. good. Like, costume designs, very like, reminiscent of like the Jared Leto days where it's like, what the fuck? you know yeah. and then you see the the performance isn't that great the story doesn't really add much i'm like you guys want to do the report is like 12 of these oh wow good luck getting people to hang around i will say to their credit when i fired up the game mm-hmm. they hit you with a lot of like this is new we changed this we added this but then i'm like all right let's actually proof is in the pudding we fire it up these missions are the exact same if anything they're worse wow um, oh my dude i I didn't have a problem getting to Suicide Squad, but some of these missions, the chaos that they are, the visual clutter, it's worse. Like I got footage upon footage already. I'm going to show my video on this thing. It's it's not good to play, bro. It's mm. it's terrible looking, man. It, it is so hard to track the action on screen. I died more times in this new stuff than I ever did in the base game. I'm like, there's a problem here, which is visual, visual clarity. I don't know what mm. I'm shooting at, what I'm looking at, what I'm avoiding. Like this game is gonna hurt someone. Like someone is going to develop <laughs> like a, so like seizures through this game because there's Damn. just so much shit happening on screen. Like this game is dangerous. Like there's just too <laughs> much happening. It's not okay. That's a discretion advice. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, Suicide Squad still not good. Still not it. Yeah. Damn. It's hoping a joke did it for you, man. Maybe you'll like it more than me, but I don't know. I just no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. You're bu- you're busy, man. You're good. All right, that's what we're playing, Kyle. We got one question, some news to get into afterwards. Enraged Seahawk of Seattle writes in, Hello, Senpai, Maddie, and Courageous Cog. Last week, you discussed 1943, led by famous director Amy Hennig. My question is, we also know she is making a Star Wars game, and Maddie is a Star Wars fan. What would you want comparing this to the 1943 production quality? There's also speculation it's a reboot of her canceled EA Star Wars game. Plus, I went to my first hockey game recently. The Krakens may suck, but it was really fun. Stay safe, and here's hoping for the Seahawks comeback. Shout out to you, Seahawk. Thank you for writing in. Unless you're, you're cog, we don't want we don't want the Seahawks thriving out here. Yeah, man. Look, I took a couple photo with you guys at the LSM event. That was love. That was love. <laughs> as a photo. That, you Remember guys what the yard you guys? Nah, it's all good, man. It's a little good. Rep your team. Rep your team. You know who got the NFC West, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a good question because i forgot that she's working on a star wars game i actually had to double check this information because i was like is he confusing star wars 1313 with it's like no sky dance is also working on a star wars game and if 1943 is anything to go by like i i am pretty excited at least for the production quality of it like what would i want well right now ubisoft looks to be working on the open world star wars game i wanted like just blowing the thing wide open cool great like what else do i want um you kind of have this in betweener in Jedi Survivor of high production value and kind of souls like gameplay. I'm like, I would have picked a souls like Star Wars game. So for this, you know, I would like an uncharted style Star Wars game. Um, it's usually not my jam, but I feel like with the Kotor remake, it's like you don't need to go do an RPG. You don't. They got it handled. So then I'm thinking, what other avenues are there? And I'm like, I want to play as just a guy with a blaster pistol or a chick with a blaster pistol. And that's kind of what's cool about outlaws, but yeah, just something with high production value. And I say that because I think when people watch the movies, (laughs) the uh, shows, some of the production quality for star Wars has fallen off and there's instances where it's really good. And people are reminded, Oh, this is special. And I, I had that rediscovery with Jedi survivor. I was like this series fucking rules. Uh, that story in Jedi Survivor is so good, man. Yes. So good. When a Star Wars story hits, it hits. And uh, I just, you know, what I'm thinking is, okay, the movies are lacking. Like, we have this 1943 level of presentation, you know, just one energy. 
and it's Star Wars, it's like that could remind people like what this series does right, what's so special about it, the quality bar raises. Uh, so I, I trust in her to deliver something kind of like that. But that that would be my pick personally. Cog, what about you? You as a Star Wars fan yourself, do you think uh, little 1943 production quality would go a long way? Do you want a just one style title? What would you want as the ideal Star Wars game from Amy Hennig's team? I'm torn because I love Amy so much and I just feel like right now it feels like all the genres are like accounted for because I look at what Respawn did and I'm like, man, like you want to jump in that space with Cal? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you know, I don't know which approach they're going to do, but I, I know her writing, you know, and I know the storytelling and look, we we can't front on that, that Black Panther, you know, Captain America joint. Whatever it is, keep on using UE5. <laughs> Whatever it is, because that yeah. thing looked beautiful. But look, there's more stories to tell. I'm just curious about the genre, like how, you know, if she sticks with her, you know, kind of like a tried and true, just one energy, do we go a different route? That's all I'm concerned. I'm not worried about the quality of the game per se, just worried about what attack or what approach she has, you know, kind of thing. So we'll see. For me, I mean, I've got all bases covered. You got Outlaws coming with this, you know, the open world joint. To me, like Jedi Survivor really raised the bar yeah. for anyone yeah. to even try to approach that. So I'm yeah. I'm not want to disrespect the legend. I don't want to disrespect the old girl. I don't want to disrespect her. <laughs> but I Respawn it. is outside mm. on that part. So you're going to have to do something with a story or a narrative that... Ma- that we just ain't see yet. And we like, okay, you know what? This is a story that we really want to see in a chess yeah. one, you know, kind of thing. And I'm just curious to see how they approach it. Also a new character existing. How do we fit this in the universe? A lot of possibilities, but I, I am slightly worried about oversaturation with Star Wars universe stuff and telling distinct stories. Not that I don't want it, but now the bar is raised. So yeah. it, it you, to find your lane, you really got to yeah. go go where you fit in. So we'll see. We'll if see. Jedi Survivor is indicative of anything, it's that they're going to start dabbling with High Republic stuff in their games. And I hope that she has like a dedicated High Republic game because like, look, man, I, I want I'm going to watch the Acolyte out of obligation. But just looking at the trailer, I'm like, this is the first big debut for the High Republic era on screen. The books are great. I've read some of them like they're great. And that's why I was excited for the Acolytes. It's like, yeah, we're doing this High Republic story. You see that cover art. You see the lightsaber handle and the blood coming. I'm like, dude, that is art. Mm-hmm. And then I see that trailer and I go, <laughs> man. So I'm hoping that she does some high production value stuff in the High Republic era. That would also be really, really cool. Yeah, look, Amy's a legend. Regardless of the way, it's it's most likely gonna be quality. I just, I'm just curious because yeah. she's yeah, she's fighting out here. She go she got some good some competition to go yeah. against. But she's kind she, of in that Jade Raymond area though, where like I don't remember the last Amy Hennig game we played. Like she's had a lot of canceled shit. To be fair, and yeah. I remember and and to be honest, when I saw Marvel 1943 announced, and then they announced a Star Wars game afterwards, I'm like, that's a lot of trust for. You know, she's amazing, but like yeah. the games haven't shipped. And it's yeah. the same thing we said about Jade Raymond. So um, I just hope these games see the light of day. Star Wars games, particularly ones based around scoundrels, seem to have a curse. So I hope it makes its way out the door. Yeah, let's see. All right. Let's move into the news, Cog. Flying along here. We have our number one story this week. Mega Crit, the Slay the Spire developers and Red Hook Studios from Darkest Dungeons have said that Game Pass and Epic Game Store deals have dried up for indies, with Microsoft deals coming, quote, way down, end quote, in scope, saying that, quote, the gold rush is over, end quote. And there's a lot of ways we could pick at this. I have thoughts on different parts of the spectrum from being a developer who wants to pitch their game around all the way to what this means for Xbox and the future of Game Pass, because Uh, These aren't just random indie developers. These are some of the most prominent uh, the industry has to offer. Uh, Darkest Dungeons and Darkest Dungeons 2 are widely celebrated. Slay the Spire has been on Game Pass for a while. Uh, Mega Crate makes some great games. So, Cog, what do you make of hearing the gold rush is over? Is this another step in the evil villain Xbox reign? Or (laughs) 
is to something much more. What does this mean for Game Pass, sir? Let's let's hear your thoughts. Here you go. <laughs> now let me stop. Now look, in fairness, it, this is worth monitoring. I don't know yet, man. This is I've been digging around. I've been digging around. I've been trying to get a feel, trying to get a vibe. What's going on? Is it truly like, hey, yo, bags are stopped now, bro. That's it. Um, I don't know because it, it, there's a part of me that when I ask some questions, it seems isolated to a few here in these developers here and there. Then I look at, let's look at, you know, Game Pass Pick of the Week that we've been doing. I mean, not Game Pass Pick of the Week, but what's coming to Game Pass, what's leaving Game Pass for like the last three to four months. You know, yes, the feel is we're not seeing as many as we did maybe top of 2023 where you just had like an abundance of them, right? You just feel like, oh, wow, this, okay, here comes Planet of the Lana. Here comes Somerville. Here comes, you know, Replace or whatever. Even Replace it even out yet, but But you know what I mean? It's a good pick though, for sure. Right, you know what I mean? Like we start this, we saw that flow with that store and, you know, it was was like a a, a good, healthy. It was keeping the platform afloat, the Ascent. It's another one. Ascent, yeah, which I like a little bit more than you, clearly. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we start to see it now. I don't want to get too crazy because I still see like we we just came off the um what is one of the partner showcases and the indie showcase and I saw some titles I'm like wow that's cool they're they're still giving them out so what I think is I don't think that it's completely dried up but I will admit do I do see a slight tapering right I I, I kind of could feel that like maybe it's anecdotal but what I will say is that there's a part of me that also understands that we have to be real right. Lord acquisition here. Guess all the things that they have now acquired and finalized, right? Especially with ABK and now Bethesda in tow. The goal of the acquisitions was to have your own to push into Game Pass to say, this is what we're flooding with our own. So it's only natural that to me, third party Xbox uh, Game Pass deals will slow slightly and slightly with indie. But I'm going to still die on a square that Xbox, ID at Xbox ain't completely... Like this, like 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 the faucet's been turned off. I'm yeah. not there with that yet because I still see some evidence again with the latest partner showcase, with the latest indie showcases that indie guys are getting back. Maybe they're being more selective, and maybe they're not as overwhelmingly abundant as in the last you know two years. So I'll leave it at that. It's worth monitoring. I'm not willing to go to this gold rush is over lane yet. I'm not there, but. You know, maybe Maddie convinced me otherwise and say, hey, nah, Murrow, I'm seeing it. You know, dudes ain't, ain't handing out them bags. It's different out here. They they got, they twirling their mustache. Uh, I know where you at with it. <laughs> What's going on? Um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see prominent indie dev saying that the gold rush is over. What that indicates to me is maybe the big bags aren't a thing getting forked out, maybe more reasonable prices. Because Xbox, you got to think of it this way, right? You're trying to stabilize this uh, this service that is a massive part of your ecosystem. Okay, how do we do that? We have to bring known names in because right now we don't have enough games to do it ourselves. As we buy more studios, maybe we will. So now they're trying to pay less out because they have these companies in-house making games that are going to go day one into Game Pass so you need to strike less deals. And if you can strike less deals and cheaper deals at that, then you've got the winning formula there. Um, that is, we've talked about this with Xbox and Xbox Game Pass in the past. We've said their ultimate goal is to eventually cut out the third party. They don't want to do third party day one. It benefits us. And I think there's going to be deals. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm, I'm with COG. I don't think the faucet gets shut off. But their goal is to cut out as many like, here's your paycheck. It's like, no, we're already spending a lot on making these games. Let's put them into the service and have them produce results through Game Pass. So, yeah, ultimately, when it, when it comes to Game Pass, I, I think that's where it's trending in that they're going to try to produce their own content more. Indies, I think I'd be surprised, though, if they just, I wouldn't say stop the hunt. They're not going to. ID at Xbox exists strictly for that purpose. But I'd be surprised if they even slow it down because, number one, indies need less money in general. So... There's that like they can get profit straight off a game pass deal like they could put this much money into the game. You give them a game pass deal and they're like, OK, everything after these sales is just clean money for us. Like, that's it. Uh, so we'll see just how far we go. Um, but ultimately, um, I think it also helps them fill out the service more 
with new experiences that can maybe have that Fall Guys effect. You can't turn your nose up at games like Pal World, at games like High on Life, where these are things that push your service forward just as much. And I know in the case of High on Life, that's a bigger game. Pal World, smaller team, but maybe not exactly indie per se. Uh, But no doubt that these help define your service. And I could see them cooling off a bit where we we used to do with Defining Duke Ultimate, like let's look ahead, let's rank our most anticipated Game Pass games or rank our favorite Game Pass games. And there was a lot of indies to pick from. Like some of the big staples of the Xbox showcase used to be just indie, indie, indie. I think the difference between last year's summer showcase and the ones we got beforehand was that it was all triple A's. Why I gave it such a high grade. I was like, they came out swinging with all of their big guns. Like it's all the stuff from their teams for the most part. Um, and so I could see the tapering in some regards. I don't think it's as heavy handed as originally proposed here. There's no denying that as we talked about last week with the, the quote death of Xbox is that there's an ability to run away with certain comments to reaffirm preconceived notions. Um, and so I think when it comes to this, it's like, yeah, certain indies, by the way, indies who have already collected their bags for their games are going to get less money. But does that mean that, I don't know, let's use an easy example. If I show up and I got something that they, that they want, that they go, oh, this could push a player base to our service or, oh, this looks great. This looks like it would grow us more. Like, let's give them a bag. Does that mean I'm just going to get shortchanged on it? I don't know. I don't think it's a guarantee necessarily because each product is different. It really depends at the end of the day on how much do they want it. If they really want it, they'll pay. If they don't, they'll give you an offer and maybe it's not enough. Um, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think they're going to do any more of these benevolent deals. That was inevitable. Um, and if that's what they're referring to, then yes, then the gold rush truly is over. But now they might be in the the business of more of a fair deal for themselves. Yeah. And, and being more selective as far as the quality bar, because, you know, again, we can't discount, you know, Power World and um, bro, there's other stuff like Brotato I saw. And it is like, I saw like recently about four or five games. I'm like, OK. They are still in it as far as actively seeking out stuff. Now, I also saw, which was surprising to me, was um, Tales of Concera. I don't know if you just saw. Yeah. You know, they just got the play PS PlayStation Plus bag. Oh, they're doing a Sea of Stars here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, but mind you, I don't think they have a Game Pass bag at all. They're part of EA. So it was oh. interesting to see PlayStation swoop in. So to me, I'm also seeing PS Plus being more competitive. Now, I think Game Pass has forced them to up their indie ad, you know, state space because I never seen PlayStation before be as aggressive since um what was the one that got both? Sea of Stars was the one that got yeah. both. Yeah. Right. So I'm starting to see if if you look at the offerings lately, what I'm noticing, again, this is anecdotal, it's maybe the last month. PlayStation Plus's offerings has really improved. Right. Not saying that Game Pass is hacked because I think two weeks ago we saw we had a Game Pass. Um, what's coming? We were like, oh, yo, this feel like old days. We were yeah. like, yo, these yeah. games are are crazy. But I will say that again, I'm sticking with my theory. As Game Pass, I mean Xbox Game Studios has been now filled out, the reliance may slow a little, whereas they're more, like you said. Uh, fairer to Xbox as far as just <laughs> the amount that they were throwing at people. And now that the service is kind of in this past the acquisition phase. So we'll see. It is something to monitor. I'm not going to say there's absolutely no validity to it. Oh, it's all fun. I'm not going to go there, but I still see enough from Xbox ID at Xbox that doesn't s- show me that they are throwing in the towel. That's it. This yeah. generation, in my opinion, has been one of the most impressive from Xbox I've ever seen in the indie space. So let's see what happens as we you know move forward. I'm not going to discount these developers. Let's see what happens. If more and more stories of that come come by, then yeah, I'll look into it. But for now, just, I'm gonna. It, it's one of those. All right, eyebrow. We'll look. Yeah. Before I'm going like, oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely over. I, I, I'm i not there because sure. to your point, I do feel I hate to say that I do feel there is a certain subset of individuals who want to impose their thought process on how Xbox is doing based on partner showcase and other things. Because let's be honest, there is a sense of the community is down right now. 
right? So any bit of negative Xbox news is going to compound that yeah. based on what happened at the partner showcase. And I am sensing a lot of people like, oh yeah, this is wrong and, and that's wrong. And, and this, you know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't there yeah. yet. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I look at Xbox's 2024 as 10 first party games that are coming out to the platform that are extremely exciting that we haven't seen this much excitement from a quality game standpoint in a long time couple with indies couple with third party showcase part couple with partner showcase so me personally i'm not the world is over because some people in their feelings of four games that went elsewhere <laughs> yeah and, and i think that it's just a cherry on top when it comes to if they are slowing down on indies you look at the money they spent and a lot of moves have been made uh layoff wise restructuring of how they sell games uh, to think a- a- Xbox Game Pass would be unscathed in that was foolish. So it's possible that they're looking at bigger third-party games that they can add to the backlog on the uh, on Game Pass, um, or rather I should say backlog, but the catalog that would in turn be on people's backlogs uh, into Game Pass. And uh, they may be like, we, we always talk about that two-week stretch of Hitman Trilogy and Mass Effect Trilogy and like how yeah. crazy that was. Um, you know, I think they might be targeting bigger games too, Maybe not on a day one basis, but uh, just in general. So it's filled out with the heavy hitters only. And maybe that's their idea to kind of push the service over the top. I still think indies are fastest growing in the industry right now. I think even faster growing than double A. I know that gap is closing between double A and triple A, but I really look at indies as sort of like the ones moving and shaking and, and getting things done in this industry right now. And uh, they're they're definitely the stars of this year, as far as I'm concerned. Um and so, yeah, I, I, I really think that it's possible they could be dialing down on indies just to pump up the service with bigger looking games. Um, so it's all just like heavy hitters everywhere you look. Yeah. And again, one of the last piece of evidence I look at is like the Xbox partner preview showcase that we saw. And we saw that game like the altars. Right. And we're like, wow, that's a nice get. Yeah. Getting yeah. the game pass. You know what I'm saying? It, there was also another. Uh, I forgot the colorful one with the. Oh, man, I forget her name. But. To your point, I'm seeing a balance of indie and double A. I'm seeing a little bit more double. And then we've seen like a, something like a Path of the Goddess jumping in there, making from Capcom brand new IP. So I, I'm seeing, like you said, I think you made a good point. I think early on it was more reliance on indies, but now it's big title, little title, double A. Like I'm seeing a, a, a nice mixture, but sure. we'll see. We shall. For now, we turn our attention to news that many people have been awaiting, I think. And after much patience, news may be on the horizon for Hollow Knight Silk Song. The game is now with a, uh, it has an Xbox and Nintendo store page with a recently revealed rating of E10 Plus, suggesting the game is done and could be due out for a release soon. So let's see here, Cog. It's the beginning of April. Page is up, rating submitted. This is a day one Game Pass game. One of the most anticipated games of the year, no doubt about it. I had it in my fantasy draft for July. We'll see if we end up being accurate on that. That'd be hilarious. Um, but do you think this is a summer showcase moment for Xbox? Do you think it's just a surprise announcement? Uh, there's a lot of anticipation for what Team Cherry is working on here. And it's because it went with an announcement and then no update for a while. Uh, so what do you make of, of what's happened here with Hollow Knight Silk Song? It's funny while you're talking... I covered this game. I played this game at E3 2019, Maddie. Mm-hmm. Wow. 2019. That's, I'm looking at So it's been a while. <laughs> IOP. I'm doing the coverage right now, man, the Nintendo event. And I'm just like, where is this game? <laughs> and it looks so good. It looked like it was ready to go, right? So it's very... I'm very curious about the development process, what, what happened, you know, kind of thing with this. But um, look, it's finally coming. A lot of people revere this game. The wait seems to finally be over. So, yeah, this is this would be a nice indie feather in the cap. Okay. <laughs> Being right on indie, yes. right? It, this is a big one, you know, to, to, to not miss the platform. And that's the other thing I want to I want to highlight is that I know a lot of stuff, you know, we, we even get on them. It's like stuff missing Xbox and mm. What I want to, I do want to say, having games like this, 
and a lot of the bigger games I'm not seeing miss. What we still, we got to fix those little problems with these smaller ones and Mega Man collections, you know, Final Fantasy Pixel Edition, you know, we got to fix the gaps. But for the most part, as someone who came from the Xbox One era where, oh, you're not getting Street Fighter. Oh, you may not. I remember when Xbox wouldn't get Tekken. I remember those days. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I see continual improvement and I see the Sega's, the Atlas's, you know what I'm saying, the Capcom. I am seeing it. Yeah. So overall, net positive. I know it's doom and gloom right now for some with the part in the showcase. I get it. But we can't lose sight of things like Hollow Knight and things like they're not missing. Sure. The big stuff is not missing for the most part. Yeah, this is going to be... Uh, I don't think I'm underselling. It's going to be a massive game. I would argue like one of the most massive games of the year. Look at the trailer view count for Hollow Knight Silk Song. Like, it's, I think, past 7 million views, which is insane for an indie game. There's a lot of love for Hollow Knight. And it's honestly one of those uh, rare misses for me when it comes to a game quite like that. So I don't know what the buzz is about Hollow Knight. I just know this is like when it got announced, I said this is one of the biggest deals in Game Pass right now for Xbox, and they're kind of just sitting on that. And that's the one good thing about games that get delayed that already have a Game Pass deal for Xbox fans is that that does not really have an impact on future deals. All of those things are made in like the the near term. Those deals, uh, they're struck in that manner. So that means that you just might get like Hollow Knight one week. You'll get something like what happened with Starfield, right? Where you got like Starfield, Sea of Stars, got a ton of shit that week. So. Uh, I'm very excited for this one. I do want to play Hollow Knight this year if I have the time to, uh, just because I've I've heard so many good things about it. And uh, Silk Song is apparently the the real deal uh, from from what I'm gathering from community excitement. Uh, so I can't wait to to learn more on that. All right, we have next up here as I type in the timestamp coming soon to Xbox Game Pass April first, which it'll already be out by the time you're listening to this. Super hot mind control delete on console, PC, and cloud. April 3rd, this will already be out on Game Pass. Lego 2K Drive on console, PC, and cloud. Take that, 2K. And weren't they the ones saying that the Game Pass ain't worth it? <laughs> <laughs> How about now? <laughs> you funny. You got the bag. <laughs> April 4th, so by the time this episode goes out for early access, you'll get Little Gator Game on console, PC, and cloud, and EA Sports PGA Tour via EA Play on Xbox Series X and S, PC, and Cloud. April 9th, you get Botany Manor on Series X and S, as well as PC and Cloud. Kona also arrives on April 9th on console, PC, and Cloud. April 11th, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition arrives on console, PC, and Cloud. And then April 16th, Harold Halibut arrives on Xbox Series X and S, PC, and Cloud. Meanwhile, leaving soon, all these games exit Xbox Game Pass on April 15th on console, PC, and cloud. So listen closely. Amnesia Collection, Amnesia Rebirth, Back for Blood, Phantom Abyss, Research and Destroy, and Soma. So Lord Cognito, I take it to you, sir. Any games calling your name here? What are you playing, if anything, from this list? As a VR guy, uh, Super Hot is actually surprising. I was like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> That's a big one. That's a big one for the uh, VR community. I'm very curious to see that, how that is received. And uh, shout out to Tomb Raider, Definitive Dish. I actually missed out on that. I actually mm. missed out on that one. And I am, you know, good one. Croft, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed that one. I forgot what came out during that time that I missed out on that one. So, yeah, that's a nice, kind of reminds me how they stuck control in there, how they stuck in this one in there. For for, for me, <laughs> they're clearly thinking about my needs and what yeah. I need to catch up on. So this, for me, I, I see two ones for me. What about you? Yeah, I just wanted to signal boost Shadow of the Tomb yeah. Raider. I think that game's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, I like Lara Croft a lot in that story. I think the way she is immature and how she grows is handled really well. Uh, so I just want to shout that one out for sure. Uh, Lego 2K Drive. I was always really curious about this game. And now that's in Game Pass, I'm thinking to myself, OK, you know what? I, I might take a moment, check it out. You know, I'm still below by 30, so it's no creepy Maddie at the park quite yet. So I can get yeah, away with checking you. out a little Lego game here. Uh, there. <laughs> and I, you know, I, look, I, next to me, I got a stack of Lego games. I love Lego. So when I saw 2K Ooh. Drive, I didn't buy it because. I saw what 2K was doing. There was some monetization in there, some, I think, passes in there. I was thinking like, oh, get the impressionable Lego lover kids in. They're like, mommy, daddy, can you buy me these Lego cars, please? And so that at its 
free 99 on game pass we will be checking it out so i'm looking forward to looking at that one i haven't played a golf game in a while so ea sports pga tour i don't know if this is good or bad i was but, thinking about that yeah, too it's been a hot minute since i've played a golf game Same. i used to love the tiger woods games bro tiger woods pga tour 2004 one of the best sports games ever that career mode those golf courses the roster Sick. the soundtrack so good so good i Oh my god, love that game! So yeah, haven't played a good golf game in a while. Uh, I'm wondering if this one is any good. So yeah, and then when it comes to leaving soon, n- not really seeing anything that you need to shed a tear over or you know rush out of your way to go play. So that's my two cents on it. You ain't pulling one out for back for blood. You ain't pulling one out. Uh, Valiant Soldier in the Game Pass Army tried its best, you know, to to support the the back for or the, I'm sorry, the Left for Dead movement. Left for Dead, I know. And uh, it it disappointed soundly. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you for I your think. service. <laughs> Rest easy. Take care. We appreciate you. Back for blood. Damn. All right. Game Pass pick of the week time. Let's do this. Uh, I had the selection this week, and I'll admit it's a pretty easy one, but. Uh, I couldn't ignore the option here. It's the beginning of a new era, folks. The Activision Blizzard era is upon us. We're starting to get those games in the Game Pass. The big drop is here. If you fire up like the Xbox app on PC, you're going to see the fire raining down. They're going all out for Diablo 4. Now, I'll be transparent. I've not dabbled in the end game. Cog can speak to that a little bit more than myself. I've not dabbled in any of the new seasons. I am a simple man. I played Diablo 4, I beat its story, I had fun with my Necromancer class, and I moved on. I think you can do that too and have a positive experience with Diablo 4. Now, for the end gamers and those who can't stand what they've done with it, I am not silencing you. I'm speaking more to the uh, the simpletons such as myself. Okay, You didn't pick up Diablo 4. You're looking for a seamless, open world, looter game. Diablo 4 feels great to play. The classes are awesome. The fidelity is impressive for the type of game it is as well. The cutscenes and story are much improved. Lilith is a great antagonist. I'm not saying it's going to sweep you off your feet, but I really enjoyed everything about Diablo 4. Was it one of my favorite games of that year? I would say so. It wasn't in my top 10. There were games that I think were better than it. Diablo is kind of a known quantity. If I had a preference, I do like Diablo 3 more. I will admit that. Uh, just the game with with the expansions, everything packed in, uh, just a real full package and not reliant on what I felt was like any sort of monetization, seasonal changes, any of that. So I just enjoyed Diablo three for what it was. Uh, but Diablo four is still a great game, especially you can play with friends. It's easy to get them together, easy to quest together. Uh, these dungeons at times touch repetitive, but. Uh, you'll just want to hit everything as you're going around like they they do a really good job setting up events in the open world that kind of function like an mmo like oh something's on going over here let's run over and check this thing out and uh, fight a bunch of enemies off complete that quest get aptly rewarded for it so i think they've done a great job with it again i can't speak to the end game but i really like diablo 4 and its base state and played it from start to finish no problem we talked about it a lot on duke and knowing that's in game pass i think it's a super easy recommendation that if you've got the time uh, even if you need to shut your brain off game, it can function as that too. You don't really need to pay attention to the story. I think the opening moments are really great. Some awesome voice acting too. Some crazy cutscenes that uh, they really pump some budget into. Like, I don't know, man. They, they, I don't think they really rested on their laurels here. Personally, I can't act like I played much of Diablo 1. I played a little bit of the Diablo 2 remaster. I wasn't crazy about it. I love Diablo 3 and I thought Diablo 4 was great. So I do recommend people check it out if you got Game Pass. Uh, I don't know how it is on PC, but on console, I played it on Series X, and I thought it was great there. Uh, Cog, but you you have more experience than me, I'd yeah. say recently, even with mm-hmm. uh, just time playing the end game and seeing what's going on there. This was the game that ripped you from Destiny for a little bit it when did. your when your marriage was strong at that time, too. So you were flirting in the club a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what do we make of Diablo 4 and some of the end game stuff you did dabble in? I know the seasons mm-hmm. change and everything, so I don't want to yeah. put you in this ironclad, like what you say <laughs> is law. But what did you make of mm-hmm. playing it after the credits had rolled? Yeah, look, I would say that was the season of the vampire and the one after, you know, I think I think they were decent, but I didn't consider them long. I didn't mean, have long tails to, mm. to, to keep me sticking with it. And I think the problem with Diablo is this. First of all, it's a great recommendation by you because... From the base game, absolute quality. 
like great story, ambiance, everything you describe. This is perfect for someone who, for whatever reason, was living under a rock, who was like, I'm not messing with it. I'm not buying it. Play this game. This is a high quality game, Diablo 4, right? The issue came down to once the end game stuff happened in conjunction with over aggressive, heavy handed nerf spotted development team. And it pissed the community off because I, as a, as a Destiny the Looter guy, I know when you don't listen to the community yeah. after a while, they're like, bro, you just killed all my builds for Sorcerer. You yeah. just killed. And I remember me being discouraged. I had uh, some great builds that that really, they didn't want you to, you know, beat these high level tier stuff so quickly with these builds people were coming up with. So it's that balance there. So I don't think they recovered at that point. And the player base has went down. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Really, like it's low right now. So this is a shot in the arm. Let's get game pass. But here's the real silver line. Here's what I'm telling the people why you got to come back. They're about to have their Taken King moment. Vessel of hatred from everything I hear. Now, mind you, this is going to be an expansion. So I'm not assuming that's going to be part of game pass. If game pass throws this on this. God Whoa. bless y'all. They are the best service in gaming. I'm expecting them to charge for this. But what they're oh, going to do is... Activision Blizzard. They're, they're charging oh, yeah, for this. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get that work. You, your wallet yeah, yeah. going to get that work. <laughs> so here's the thing. People who have never played, get in it now. Get Play that core campaign experience. Enjoy the beauty of Diablo, the builds, that, everything that it has to offer. I'm telling you right now, when Vesta, from everything I'm hearing from the hardcore, Vessel of Hatred is their fa- their phantom liberty moment mm. where they completely change mechanics they take a lot of feedback from the community so i think we they said it's supposed to be june they may even push it a month we'll see because they want to make sure they nail it they need a home run here so i'm sure. expecting a ton of vessel of hatred promo but potential game showcase energy at the mm. xbox showcase that would be a perfect stage to say hey we've listened this is what we're doing. And here are all the new gameplay mechanics sure. in addition to stuff you've always been wanting us to do that we were a little stubborn about. So they've learned their lesson because that play account, boy, like, Destiny is out here smashing them right now. Oh. Yeah. Remember, this is the, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think Diablo will make a comeback. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that provided they, they listen. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? But from all accounts I'm hearing from the hardcore, it'll be back. But, yeah, great game pass pick of the week because this is the time to start getting yourself back into it right before that joint drops. Awesome. So there you go. There's a full report on Diablo 4. Thank you for filling that part in. Mm -hmm. Important. So with that, you're getting right on at the right time. You can ride this right into the new expansion. We'll see how that ends up going. So that's your Game Pass Pick of the Week, Diablo 4. Last part of the show here. We're we're flying through this. We were not kidding. It is a dry, barren week, so you get very little of the Dukes, unfortunately, this time around. We apologize, but we have one final question because I, I normally when we have a light news week, I fill it with questions, but we had like 20 write-ins this week. I was like, damn, all right, everyone's snoozing this week. No problem. No problem. We'll, we'll still show up. We'll still be there. Uh, Meatball has a bit of a follow-up. You may remember Meatball talked in, Couple, uh, wrote in a couple of weeks ago about his move. I mean, he said, should I hire a moving company? Should I ask friends for help? We were talking about, like, you know, this is where you uh, learn. So here's what Meatball said. Meatball. Greeting, Dukes. Quick update from my write-in a few weeks back. My wife and I successfully moved into our new place with the help of a local moving company. Shout out to two men in a truck in Phoenix, Arizona, if you're listening. All that being said, I now have the opportunity to make a man cave for the first time in my life. What are the essentials I got to pick up? Mini fridge? Lazy boy chair? 65-inch OLED? Help me, spicy soldiers. You're my only hope. All right, Let's Meatball. Go. Thank you for writing in. Glad to hear your move went well. It seems like you decided to not ask your family for any help. You have decided to go with the moving company, so congrats on that. We're happy to have guided you to the right place. Cog, you have a little bachelor's pad. I got this little office here. We're crafting out our man caves. Like, What do you think is a bare essential for the gaming setup the ultimate place to sit down chill play some games escape the world that's your zone what is mm. i mean you know look i'm always biased as a console gamer to the to the traditional you know couch slash tv experience where you got that 65 slash 70 whatever mm-hmm. oled i want that big screen 
I want that fidelity, that VRR. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want that real that HDR popping. But to me, just as important. Now, if you don't want to go too crazy with the super high fidelity surround, because I'm a big sound, you got to get your Dolby Atmos popping, bro. If you're a gamer, <laughs> you got to get your Dolby Atmos. You need to hear. I, can't, I, I don't mean to take us off the, subject, but anytime you bring up Dolby Atmos, I think of that bathroom story. You sold, You told us the dude's blowing it up Dolby Atmos. <laughs> I literally, anytime someone says Dolby Atmos or you say it, I'm just like, I just think of that story. Like, I realize how much it scarred me in that moment. Please that's, continue. That's the fidelity of that bathroom situation <laughs> of him blowing it up. That's how, how crisp it was. <laughs> <laughs> bro you need to know how that feels man you need to know what that sound is like man like bro it it's a game change then think about it you want to define and do you, you know what's coming in may you know that center was song is coming you need to hear center one all her fidelity when she's whispering and she's mm-hmm. questioning things you need to have surround a highly advised because i know some of my you know guys they they have phone guy and that's cool but if this the band came you want to, like, what we used to do is you either get the horror game, dim the lights, get Man. the ambiance going, crank the surround up. This is your place. This is your sacred place. So I would say that, you know, mini fridge, you know, that Series X mini fridge, you know what I'm saying? Oh. If you want, you know, really get that going, have a nice couple of little beverages, you know, right? Accessible if you can. Um, with me, I would probably say, this is just not personal, you know, I always like um nice little um addict got me on it too where it's like either nice little portraits or photos like when you come into my place I have like it's almost like a a hall of fame right mm. and I have like these little really high quality frames I have my sports guys right so you got your David Wrights I got my 49ers you know what I'm saying yeah. sports got my, my Steve Youngs and Jerry yeah, I realize now I've never seen beyond this room yeah, in like, your place the, the, I have I no idea it. what's on the yeah, other side of the that great wall hall. I had a he's like yo this is cool and then I got like like uh, about like destiny, the destiny warlock and trials of Osiris gear. Okay, I've got heroes, wrestling heroes. I got an ultimate warrior, classic eighty like inter- intercontinental run warrior up there. I got Roy Jones. All my heroes and gaming and you whatever it is. If it's just gaming related, but you got a picture of Todd to Howard s- up there. No, 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 no God, no God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't ready yet. You know what I'm saying? But uh, like whatever you, I always feel like inspired. I got silver. Oh, I got this insane silver surfer portrait Mm -hmm. i'm a big imagery portrait guy like king is the statue guy but i'm like the image and the you know the the, like because i want to treat like it's these are fine paintings yeah yeah you uh, you and i are the same you and i yeah so you know like look at yours i'm looking at you in the back you know you got you have those things that resonate like fill out (laughs) just like where the set is capturing for retro rebound (laughs) everything surrounding is just fucking empty (laughs) yeah it's all over the place but (laughs) but you have things that i know them turtles was up there whatever is near and dear has to be represented kind of on the wall if you don't want on the wall and maybe a, a mini statue or your collector's editions yeah. one of the best man caves i got a shout about shout out to my man ainsley but we got to get him back on mm. you know uh halo infinite man we had him all yeah, with yeah, halo yeah, infinite for so what you call it about him talking about yeah, him he's a, a big bit. he's a big mass effect one guy but we forgive him <laughs> <laughs> no but he's a huge witcher guy he's got a sick cave mm. sick like i'm like oh man He's doing it. He's doing it. So yeah, that's that's what I would say. Go go with your heart and surround yourself by all the things you love and care deep. What does Maddie say? Uh, I had to get creative with this setup in here because I knew I was going to be working in here and I knew I was going to be gaming in here mostly. So I had to be very conscious of like making it as cozy and as like, for example, the retro rebound sets behind me this whole time. I have to look at that a lot, but I want it to feel cozy and at home and so I, I think i did a really good job building that out with Laylee. um i think convenience should be your first th- step for ultimate man cave right you want everything accessible like for me it's positioned well where i'm right down the hallway from a bathroom so like if i gotta stop in between q run to the toilet come back like we're in close shot with that i'm right near the kitchen and obviously you can bring certain things to you, you mentioned a mini fridge you can do those things for me it's close enough by where I don't really need the mini fridge. Although I used to have in my bedroom, the uh, Nuka-Cola mini fridge. 
And I wish I kept that, but it broke. And I, I, I should have just kept it as a collectible. I fucking got rid of it. So stupid. Threw the whole thing away? Stupid, bro. Stupid. Yeah. That's very unlike yeah. you. Yeah, stupid. So stupid. Um, Because it just stopped working completely. Either that or... No, I, do, I donated it. I'm sorry. I donated okay, it. Okay. I donated it. Yeah, it's not like me to throw shit away. Yeah, no, I donated that because... I remember just saying, like, well, it doesn't work, but someone will find it cool to have like a little fridge as a decoration. Me. <laughs> I would love to have had that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. no to regret. But it's okay. You know, someone else has it and that's good. Um, but yeah, like I think convenience is option number one, right? Like you gotta gotta make sure everything's taken care of. You have all everything accessible. Um, that even goes down to the set. Again, for me, it's a little complicated because I'm always changing because I'm always capturing gameplay. So I'm changing out wires constantly. I put a pretty big effort into like, how can I make this convenient? So what I used to do when we first moved in here is like my whole desk was rotated a different way. I was like unplugging HDMI from the back of my computer, plugging it back. I was like, this sucks, man. So during the winter, like I twisted the desk. I bought 10 foot HDMIs. They reach all the way to my entertainment center. So all I need to do is take one cable, switch it between my Xbox or my PlayStation that's fine with me. That's a massive upgrade. I used to get behind my TV in my parents' place and like work underneath it, trying to get these things going. Then there's a handshake between the Elgato and your computer and the TV. Sometimes your screen's dark, even though it shouldn't be. It's like, what the fuck? So figured all of that out. So like I said, step one is convenience, making sure anything that you can think of that would be annoying, just have an answer to an easy answer to, because that lets you unwind. Like I relax in here so much more. Um, Upgrade your setup wireless. Get rid of the wires. Like, I'm not big with like cable management and that shit. Like I have a cable management kit. I'm going to do it one of these days. But like when I say wireless, I mean like your mouse, keyboard, like get everything clean. Keep your, I'm not one to talk right now, but keep the top of your desk clean. Little things like that. Convenience. Uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm like cog where I think of couch TV. I don't have a big TV in here because I couldn't really fit a massive TV in here, though I don't want I do want to upgrade what I have here. But my seat here is like temporary. Uh, get yourself a really cozy gaming chair, like something that you can do your research, like do your research and look up people who are saying, yeah, we got good gaming chairs right now. Uh, but not even just chairs, like not the ergonomics. Stuff. I'm talking about like Collins talked about a lazy boy, like do your research on something that you could sit in there for like three hours straight and not move a muscle and you feel pretty comfortable. Um, I would also recommend looking into a projector. I have a projector in my den and that is a game changer. I do a lot of gaming in my den now compared to here, uh, handheld options. See if you can deck yourself out with some handheld options so that your space is flexible. Like someone can hang out down there, play something on the TV while you're on the handheld. Think of those sorts of things. Lighting is a big thing for me. I like my lighting setup. I have three lights in here. All of them are yellowed. So it's kind of got that. Even when it's fully lit, it's got that kind of dim feel, although I don't think the camera lighting's showing that. Lighting's a big thing. Um, figure placements, I have in front of me, no one can see them, but shelves, and I have figures. I have big portraits of Zero and X on this Ooh. far wall here. So, yeah, like get yourself some art that excites you. Like, I'm with Cog on that. Like, when I walk in here and I see these two pieces here on, let me see if I can actually rotate the camera real quick. Yeah, what we got? Ooh! Let's go. Oh, 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 that's where they at. I was wondering yeah. from your old videos. I remember them. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So okay. they're in front of me. Um, And and I because I, I, there's no other place to really put them. I have like space on those walls over there. I'm still actually decorating and figuring this place out a little bit. But yeah, like those two pictures are the ones that uh, Ibantis pointed me out to. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got them immediately, put them in frame. Nice. And, like, they're like my favorite part of this room. They're yeah, so he's cool. such a mega man guy like you. They're so Love cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like make sure you fill it out. with. For me, it's stuff that inspires and excites me. Like when I'm writing, sometimes I, 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 it's corny, but I'll be like, I just look up yep. at that. <laughs> like, damn, look at them. They're so cool. I want to do exactly. something like that. Um, exactly. So, yeah, that, that hopefully that helps me, Paul. Just, yeah, mm -hmm. the essentials, the convenience, the coziness, and you'll be good. Yeah, and uh, I do got a branch plug a little bit. Um, with this around, if you're a guy that doesn't want to, you know, oh, I, I, I get a seven point one and Dolby DTS and all this is too complicated. Yo, get yourself a nice Sonos Arc single bar system. P plugs right into your HDMI two or three. Your e if you have eARC on your uh, TV, mm. it's perfect, and it plugs right in. Simple HDMI setup. 
and you can you download the app. You're good to go. Nice. I would say that. And then obviously I got to plug the home team a little bit with Hayworth. If, yeah. if you're looking for a chair, you know, yeah. if you got the budget, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, it, I, w- I got a co-sign. This is one of those rare instances where it's like, you know what? This is extremely comfortable yeah. versus my other chairs. I, I cannot deny it. Yeah, like, they gifted us these the chairs files. and they were they're super, super comfortable. Like I I personally, you know, I had before this uh trying to remember the name of the brand Autonomous. That's what it was, Autonomous mm-hmm. AI. They upped their prices and I had their chair for a while. I was just I felt like kind of crooked in it. But this mm-hmm. chair has been bro all reliable since I got very it. comfortable. Yeah. Oh my like I can sit and this is what my working joint and, and a PC, but but I could sit here for hours and become oh and also I would highly recommend though for people with armrests, get get the Cushions. nice little plushy cover yeah. because you want to protect these joints, bro. What us gaming and being on that, and oh, let, I got a plug. This is oh, now we got I, knew, I knew you had it. We found a placement. Yeah. You got to get your Valari, baby. Yeah. Put that thing right around the waist. Sit that bad boy on. I'm telling you, They're legit, I, no? I, yeah. legit cosine comfort. Because again, when you're a gamer, those elbows and that controller, you're in that posture. And a lot of times you're leaning forward also. Mm-hmm. You want to lean back, straight posture, gaming chair, get your little Valari. I'm telling you, cosine yeah. by, by Cog. No, Cog, Cog hooked me up with the Valari and, and those are legit great, man. They are. They I, I, I only reason I don't use mine a ton is it just takes up so much space when I put it to the side and I don't really have that room right now. Yeah. But when I do use it, it's like it, you can feel it really puts you in the right position and it's comfortable and you don't realize like having your arms rested on something yeah. while you're gaming it's a oh, luxury it's for sure but like it's a oh, it feels i got pretty I good got, i got the phone the controller yeah. <laughs> so i like do it pause i'm like all right let's see what's going on yeah it's amazing it <laughs> it's is. all good but yeah that, that's a good stuff curious to see how what he ends up with yeah as it is set up i agree send us pictures yes all right meatball time for us to wrap this thing up cog those are all the questions. Those are all the news. It's a slow week. And so I feel like DD slow must be the hashtag yeah. this week. DD slow, DD light. I don't know. What are we doing? That's light. L I T D light. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're good at that. Yeah. So if you got this deep, ladies and gentlemen, you want to let us know your thoughts on the episode. Use the hashtag DD light L I T E. You can tag us on Twitter. I am at G7 status. Cog is at Lord Cognito. You can tag us there. Otherwise, you can use the comment section on YouTube, hashtag DD Light. Let us know your thoughts at the end of the episode. Cog, we're out of here in a flash compared to our usual episode, about an hour and change sooner. Uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap this up for episode 171 next week? Another great one in the realm of the Dukes. I'll be it short, but I thought we had some really really impactful questions from from the realm of the Dukes. I thought they really yeah. you know, gave us some energy there. Um, I would say we are in the the, the 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 draw right the low right before May yeah the pre showcase low yeah pre showcase low right May I anticipate that ramp up towards Hellblade then the showcase and then things are getting wrong so just it's kind of rare for Xbox to be like it's a bit quiet I'm not right complaining because then it, yeah we get weeks like Xbox is dying and then <laughs> we don't know how to manage the show and honestly the sure. production team has earned themselves some steady weeks here yes uh, where we were for the first three months almost just jumping when we were uploading stuff all the time early access and whatnot so uh, it's good that things have settled down a little bit before they heat back yeah. up with the showcase absolutely All right, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you tuning in and we'll catch all of you next week for episode 171 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Peace out. Peace. Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is recorded from the United States of America. The show is conceived by Matthew Mr. Matty Play Schroeder and me, Colin Moriarty, and is written and produced by Matthew Schroeder. Maddie's co-host is Barry Lord Cognito Eversley. Defining Duke's executive producer is Dustin Furman, and the show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. As you know, all of Last Stand Media's shows, including Defining Duke, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer support level on Patreon, and we're thankful for your kindness and generosity. 